Hey, let's start the show. It's January 10th, 2012. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast for Tester.com. Hey, it's CS Day 2. One. You know, Will, yeah. your voice, I can hear it. It's starting. It's beginning. It's like the 20, yeah. 21st hour of October cast. Yeah. It's giving. Yeah. You yeah, hear it too, course. right? Yeah. I, I'm going to go downstairs and get, get some decongestant. I'm getting, I'm getting drip is the problem. I don't want to get super gross in the opening moments drip. of this podcast. TMI. We're, we're, well, you asked. You're the ones who brought it up. It's try. It is. First of all, CS day one. It's CS day one. Yesterday was day, day zero. One. Yeah. I understand. I, I corrected that mistake earlier on the site. I just want it to be tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I, I have a I, my my There's eyes no set rush. squarely on the on the day after tomorrow. We are living in the future. Norman Chan, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's, we're recording very much earlier tonight. It's shockingly early. Thank goodness. Thank goodness, showstoppers kind of sucked this year. Yeah. I mean, I'm really happy about that. I'll be perfect. I thought we were going to start this until 10:30 or 11, and here I'm we are. I'm going to that. Thank thank goodness the event we went to showstoppers was expedient. Actually, yes. getting this show out at a decent hour for once. I know. So. Uh, viewers crazy. on the East Coast can yeah, us can for the first time. This thing. It's only midnight for them instead of 4 a.m. Yeah. And, yes, and yes, no yeah. crazy pre-show. No, 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 no just a regular pre-show. vanilla podcast. Can um, we like cancel yesterday's show and just make this episode 100? I, I thought yesterday's show, I listened to most of it last night while we were editing. It was p- quite, it was pretty good. Yeah, the show. Yeah. I barely remember it. Well, that's why it was good. We talked okay. a lot about things. We were too tired. Never going to speak up. Exhausting. Yes. Yeah, I feel much more it. energized today, though. I don't know oh. why. Yesterday was so tiring, <laughs> and today I feel quite different. And yesterday was when you got the spa. I know. It, it makes no How sense. How weird. Nothing. Up is down, and down is up. I slept, I slept five hours last night, and I was alive and invigorated as a result of that. So, uh, so CS Day Zero. Day one. Day one. Who else do we First have day. in the room? Why oh, I'm give, sorry. Give I'm sorry. I'm a, a bad to? person. Uh, we have... Uh, well, Wes Fenlon, he's writing quietly. He's not my... He's focused intently on work. Good. He's making making content happen. Reassurance right now. that we are more than just a video website. Yeah, we there's, there's words. Yes. There's words. Uh, also, in the words from Matt Braga is operating chat tonight, so he's double wordsing at least for right now. I think they're going to swap out in a little bit when Wes gets some work done. Matt's going to take the uh, the work, put the work shoes on, and and Matt and Wes is going to take over uh, chat for us. Matt wants to say hi. Uh, so hey guys. So yes, Matt. Uh, so if you have questions, direct them to uh, at Bagels, I believe. Uh, on, on, in the chat, uh, if you guys are tuning in now, this is CSJ One. It's it's uh, the show's officially on. The first real day. Yesterday was just kind of press mm-hmm. conferences and, and build up. Got to give everyone the play by play. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, uh, everyone, you should be prepared. This is going to be a no compromises episode. If this is only a test. Smart. What does that mean? No Smart. compromises. What does that mean? It means that if if where we would it's normally mean we're going to charge a, charge a premium for it. Yeah. No. 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 Right. Where the show would normally be a thousand dollars. This is a fourteen hundred dollar. It means no compromise. If we were webcast. gonna, if we would normally get to ninety percent, mm-hmm. I'm gonna push this on straight through to a hundred percent. Okay. No All compromises. Right. Okay. Well, let's see how that goes. No compromises. Uh, no compromises is a watchword of the show this year. It turns out. Yeah. Uh, how many times did you hear no compromises today? Uh, well, it's it's a very uh, it's a giveaway. It, it's like a it's not not everyone's yeah. saying it. Smart is the thing that everyone's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. We established Everything's got to be smart. You got smart appliances, smart apps, smart TVs, smart phones. You know, everything, all, all technology has to be smarter. Yes. Because that implies better. Well, be- nobody wants dumb technology. No. 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 I, I want easier to use, but smarter apparently is the way to go. No, no compromises phones. doesn't yeah. necessarily apply to everything. But what we found is that companies who perhaps want to charge a premium for their products mm-hmm. will say that their products have no compromises. Right. Which justifies the, the price. They're action. refusing to compromise on price. Oh, no. Well, no. they've realized that they're competing against Apple. And, right. and when you're competing against Apple, no compromises are acceptable. Right. So, um, so we, we started out the day pretty, pretty strong. We went, yeah. First appointment was Sony. Okay. It was a little bit late. Uh, so, can, okay, so we didn't get that much sleep. Gary and I had a great breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I was actually amazed. You know, as I get older, one of these, one of the things I've noticed is that no matter how late I go to bed, I'm still awake at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So um, 
uh, they, they have a great break. The, the, the Planet Daily is a great Dailies. breakfast they, joint. Great coffee shop. Do they still run the uh, America's Funniest Home Videos style clip reel there? Or I didn't see anything like that. that. It was sports. It was oh, sports. But Norm and, I, oh. Norm and I met downstairs for breakfast and uh, discovered uh, a culinary delight that I, I don't know why. I would have thought this is something I would have thought of yeah. my own. But oh, oh. Uh, the fried chicken egg Benedict, which was quite quite something. So it, it, you posted a picture of this to Path, yes. but please describe, because I didn't think such a thing was possible. Well, it's basically an egg, an egg Benedict. Right, so it has an English muffin. English muffin is it with, a, with, an egg, with an egg Post and hollandaise egg. sauce. Okay. Hollandaise sauce Post yeah. egg, but instead of where you would typically have the Canadian bacon or the ham, it's a big ass piece of southern fried chicken. Is there a bone in, or is it just a like a boneless, skinless fillet? Skinless it's fillet. Skin, boneless, skinless. Okay, yes. but breaded. No, boneless. Hev- not boneless, boneless fillet. Boneless yeah. fillet. Okay, he- he- breaded heavily. Yes, and, and it was egg and hollandaise. All and over it was the top. tremendous. Mm-hmm. It looks fantastic. I'm, I'm, Norman and I both had it, and uh, we're, we're very. I mean, Planet Dailies is now my new. That's the new spot. That's the diet. I'm going to start is, every, I mean, every every day. We've only got two days here left, but I'm both. I'm going to be starting the day there. Sponsored this podcast, sponsored by Planet Dailies, Planet very, Hollywood, Planet Hollywood. Very yeah. friendly oh, service goodness. on the Miracle Mile. Kept the coffee topped up at all times. Oh yeah, yeah. it's a good Just place. Want. It's yeah. a good place. Uh, I oh thank you, Joey. Think, speaking of keeping the speaking coffee of topped coffee, off yeah. at all times. Good timing. Uh, you know, on late night talk shows, this is usually some sort of vodka cocktail. Well, I'm not sure about that dangerous chip in the cup, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drink from this side and this side. Not this side. Okay. You know, if you're drink, if you're letting someone else drink your glass, you always drink from the, where the handle is because no one drinks from there. That way, you don't. You what know. if What if you're drinking from a bottle of water, Chen? Oh, uh, then you got to rub that. Bottle. Oh, nice job on the coffee, Joey. That is, uh, you know, we 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 thank we mentioned that Weston matter here, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drew is working the video right now. Yep. Uh, Joey is is making coffee, and uh, uh, well, Thomas is talking to Joey. I don't know what time. I think he's cutting video. They're both. They're both editing. Yeah, yeah, we're we're editing furiously. Yeah. Uh, we got a bunch of good content up on the site today. The day zero wrap yep. yesterday. Joey stayed all day in, uh, in the uh, suite, yeah. production suite, editing yeah. that. Uh, I thought it was very fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it was. I thought it was quite well done. Uh, we've got I'm a little disappointed though that we didn't have any video producers at the Microsoft keynote because I really wanted to see that tweet choir. The tweet choir. I'm sure there might be YouTube. Well, you videos. watched the video stream. No, we left. We left. Oh, you had before. to leave before. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I, and you actually see the tweet choir. I wanted to oh. see the handing of the uh, the awkward uh, breakup present. The yeah. The, uh, was it uh, uh, a collage? Collage of memories. Yeah. A highlighted center. Vista was, square in yeah. the middle. Microsoft uh, Windows. Big Vista. middle finger. Um, and yeah, no bomber. So we had a bomber free recap. That was yeah, a great piece of video. We had a, a bunch of hands-ons. We talked about this yesterday. Yeah. The, the HP uh, NV14 Spectre. It, the glass, the glass lid notebook. And someone made a good point in the comments of that uh, because in the video I talked about how uh, when HP announced their NV15 and 17, uh, a lot of people just came out and said, "Hey, called them out on the fact that it was a MacBook Pro ripoff." I mean, yeah. the original NVs were they had that like brownish color. I mean, when the original uh, 15 inch NVs mm-hmm. and 14 inch NVs had that like weird texture surface, but they are clearly MacBook Pro competitors, both in price and specs. These just look like MacBook Pros with the, with the, the silver design. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, absolutely. Like the, right. key, the key tray was recessed, the chiclet yep. keys, yep. the trackpad transition was super smooth. Now, this is a completely different looking notebook. Yes, the 14 is very different, but someone in the, in the, the comments made a good point that, you know, instead of ripping off on the MacBook Pro, the NV14 Spectre kind of rips off the design of the iPhone, iPhone 4. Uh, glass front, uh, you know, glass front with the metal band, aluminum band. Who two else diff- is that? Two different things happening name, name here. Two other companies. I know it's completely different. Two other category. things. No, no, but it's yeah. not even that. One of the things is that uh, glass is a material because of the work that Corning has yes. done and, and was popularized yeah. by by yeah. Apple mm-hmm. has become a industrial design material in a way that it wasn't ten years ago. Yes. So but no, there are no laptops that I know of that have the top. A complete glass top. That, that is. I've never seen that before. I, I, I've never seen that it before. It seems crazy. Yeah. I, I'm not sure it's a good idea. I'll be perfectly frank. We're going to get one in and test it. I'm interested yeah. to care. I, you know, I think I'm interested to just carry it on and try it out, basically. Would you drop it? Um, I'd probably ask permission first because it's kind of a nice laptop. But I mean. Always ask forgiveness, never ask permission. That's a good point. Oh my God, but it fell out of my bag. Yeah. But they watched the podcast. And also, um, all, that's, all this telegraphing. Is, yeah, is we, we just we just told them we're going to drop it, and okay. then we're going to ask forgiveness. So now we really have way to go, Chan. Or ask for forgiveness ahead of time. Maybe. Uh, so speaking of uh, MacBook Air ripoffs, we saw the Samsung Series Nine today. Yes. Which is inspired by. Well, the original Series Nine, which came out Inspi- last year. Well, I, I would. <laughs> Gary's laughing. 
It's just like the, like the euphemistically way in which you said that. I, I thought about air quoting it, but yeah. I thought that might be too sarcastic. I, I would say of all the ultra books that we've seen, and uh, to be clear, Samsung isn't calling this Series 9 an ultra book because they want to, again, no compromises on the Series 9. No, um, yeah, we heard no compromises a lot it is, uh, it's, in this It's in this a pitch. premium priced uh, notebook. Um, I think it's the least, uh, not the least, but it's one of the lesser uh, MacBook Air ripoffs in terms of design. I think the Asus ZenBook that we had. Hold on, you think it's you think it's a lesser MacBook yeah, Air? I, I don't think it, from it's terms it's got the gentle curve. It's a different does, type it, of curve. does it look more like the MacBook Air than the Asus one that we had no. here yesterday? It has See, that kind no. of wedge design? That, the the wedge design of the Asus one is clearly a MacBook Air. That's the most the most shameless yeah, one. Yeah, the one so that Will has right yeah. now. No, from the side, but it's got a fat exactly. bottom. It's it's a curve, but, but from a side bottom. from a side elevation that yes. looks almost exactly like a MacBook Air. So did the Samsung. No, right. the Samsung has a different oh. curve. They call it aerodynamic. I, I would say that that design is uh, is a little more distinct. I think that using aerodynamic to describe a laptop is it's really stupid. dumb. Yeah, that is stupid. Because like when when the only time your laptop is aerodynamic is when you're accidentally huck it across the room. Or intentionally. You don't want that because you're using a PC. What was that a dig? Oh. Was that an Apple thing? Yeah, maybe. You're a little off tonight, Chad. Um, Zing. Zing. <laughs> uh, so the Samsung, Samsung Series Nine. Yeah. What, we saw it at the press conference. We saw it on the show floor. Yeah. Um, it's a second generation Series Nine. Uh, it's going to come in 13 inch and 15 inch. And like the NV14, I think they're very similar product categories. It's like Ultrabook plus plus. So Ultrabooks yeah. are big this year. Yes. Ultrabooks. Yes. Ultrabooks are a massive push. I mean, we talked yesterday. Intel was spending, I think, $200, $300 million. $300 million. Um, on R&D. Mm -hmm. There's a, even marketing. more money going into marketing, I'm yep. sure. It, it's, it's, a, it's a burgeoning category. Look, they, look, what they've done is they've trained us to like sub-three-pound laptops with netbooks. Mm -hmm. They got those in everyone's home. Everybody loves the weight and the size of those. Yeah. The problem is that they're slow and shitty. So ultrabooks um, are a great category. I mean, you know, once you've used a MacBook Air, it's hard to go back to humping around a, you know, a MacBook yeah. Pro or a big full-size laptop. Well, the only time you need a big full-size laptop is you're doing heavy lifting that right. a MacBook Pro can't do. Right. And most and, people are not going to don't need that much muscle. Well, and even even if you are, Norm's MacBook Air is faster than my it's 2 year old MacBook Pro. It's still pretty damn powerful. Yes. Yep. Yeah. No, just Sandy Bridge is amazing. It's it's crazy technology. Right. So, so um, I mean, what we think of Ultrabooks now in a couple of years will just be calling laptops again, right? Because just laptops so. will be super thin. Yeah. It, won't, it won't be a novelty. Just, that will just be the laptops inevitable march of progress. And, and Apple did say this is the future of the MacBook. This and they, the, and they, they were right. right. Yeah, I mean, look at, why, I mean, they created another category. Yeah. And cool. then, well, in terms of design, they led the way. How yeah, do these, exactly. uh, you know, the, I, I know it's easy to get seduced by the form factor and the thinness and the aerodynamicness of mm -hmm. it all. How do they compare performance wise with the MacBook? It's essentially the same hardware inside. Okay. Uh, same CPU, same same chipset, same uh, same integrated graphics. Uh, you all have then, different screens. Uh, well, and, and also some people are shipping SSDs, some people are shipping hybrids, some people are using uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's but it's the it's the uh, sixteen or twenty or thirty two gigs of flash memory on the chipset mm -hmm. paired with a traditional spinning rotating yeah, platter or called hard drive. some proprietary. It, well, it's like the Intel thing in the Z sixty eight chipset. So yeah. if I'm in the market for a super thin. Uh, Ultrabook style laptop. Mm -hmm. It's really there's not much in it other than what OS flavor I prefer. Um, well, I mean, when, when there are differences in terms of like ports and battery life, obviously. Yeah, uh, so, some have optical drives. I think the Ultrabooks mostly are starting off at a lower resolution, low resolution screen. Yeah, these Ultrabook Plus Plus, you know, no compromise laptops uh, have. Really nice 1600 by 900 resolution screens, yeah. and I, I like that. I like this category. I like, old, yeah. I like the old well, thing. Well, you know, it, it's, it's nice, because in the old days, the first time I saw a sub-three-pound laptop, it cost $2,500, right? Yeah. And it was kind of shitty. It was a Toshiba, and you'd hold the corners and kind of wiggle it, and the whole thing flexed in a way that made me really uncomfortable about a $2,500 laptop. Mm -hmm. um, that was about five years ago. So in five years, we've gone from... Executive, the kind you know, the kind of thing that Balmer carries around, right? Somebody that, that that is the, you know, not not the guy that gets the computer that IT hands him, but the guy that says, hey, this is the computer I want to IT, the executive, the executive right. laptop, and that's now the the mainstream choice for light computing users, you know, mail, email, productivity stuff, all that. It's fantastic. I think it's really exciting. I think it's only going to proceed from there. Although, you know, right now the interesting stuff that's happening there is material science, not necessarily. Computer yeah. design. There's also a lot of differentiation in uh, the keyboards and the trackpads for right. laptops. Yeah, so I mean, they, I mean, we can say, you know, you you look at that and at first glance you go, oh, it looks very much like a MacBook Air. Yes. But once you actually open it and get a feel for it, they they, they definitely have their own identities. Yeah. Yes. Well, and the big differentiators, like Norm said, the keyboards, trackpads, screen, 
Keyboards and trackpads especially are going to differentiate these. The Asus stuff has traditionally done really poorly with the trackpads. It's a huge bummer. I think a lot of that is in Windows. I think wait for Windows 8. Windows I, Windows 7 it has not been a very good multi-touch trackpad. I'm not even talking about multi-touch. I'm talking about hitting your finger on there and it not being instantly responsive. The, this, this is definitely possible. They We've all seen use it done. synaptic trackpads. No, they don't. Oh, well, There's three or four different same. vendors and some of them are really, really bad. Okay. Um, so, so you can a, save a couple of bucks and you make a product that people are going to hate. Does it look like, the, uh, of all the uh, Ultrabooks that are coming out of CES, the ones that you've seen so far, is there like a clear champion, like the flagship, the one that you would recommend? Well, it's, it's really tough to say because you really need to use the keyboard and, keyboard and trackpad for a fairly significant period of time to know how it's going to work out. Right. Um, you, you don't want to have, uh, like I, I have to sit down and type, you can't always tell when you're just sitting down and, and, and banging out a couple of words. Like on this Asus, the shift key sticks. On the Samsung that was on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, we had some sticky keys too. But you never know if that's actually a problem, right? Right. Because it could just be because it's a floor model and three hundred people have bashed. But there isn't day. one based on like the sexiness or the specs or like the things that are readily you can see just like first glass. There isn't one that's like really distinguished from the others. Well, when they're all sub three pounds, I kind of don't care uh, what it looks like. Is I, I'm interested more in weight and and keyboard and trackpad right. than how it looks. And also, to be clear, the HP NV14 is more than three pounds. Yeah, right? because of the glass. Just probably. under four pounds. Just under four yeah, pounds. Yeah, because, they, I mean, you know, as, as much as we love beautiful looking technology, mm -hmm. eventually there comes a point where you're, you know, you're tired of just staring at it lustfully and you've got to live with using it every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and honest to God, if you've had a laptop with a bad trackpad, it is without a doubt the most frustrating thing on a day-to-day -day yeah, basis especially ever. if you if you i mean one thing that apple does very well is those glass trackpads are yes. beautiful oh they they'll it's not that they're beautiful it's that they they're they're better than a mouse right i mean I, for everything but games and maybe some fine photoshop detail work i would much rather use the glass trackpad well, and any time that i've gone back to using a a windows uh, laptop trackpad after having used yeah. the, the macbook ones for a while it's like oh my god what the hell is going on it really are the things like the screen the trackpad and the keyboard things you are in, you know the, the you direct contact with, yeah. you know, mostly, right, with, you know, that's three of your senses there, two of your senses, right, not like the Ethernet thing, right? Like, I, the thing right. I don't like the MacBook Air, it doesn't have Ethernet port, Samsung Series 9 does, Yeah, that's a plus for it. Only the 15-inch one, though, right. the 13-inch. No, 13-inch has a dongle. Oh, right, exactly, it has a little micro mm -hmm. thing. Um, so we talked about laptops a lot, there are a lot of Ultrabooks out there. Intel had a wall of Ultrabooks, mm -hmm. uh, Samsung had... Maybe not all. They, they're not calling them all ultrabooks. They're essentially, you know, sub three pound. Right. The one ultrabook that we talked about yesterday that Samsung does have has an optical drive, and we were less interested in that one. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Let's so backtrack back a little bit. to Sony. Yeah. Uh, Sony was the first booth we stopped at. It was, it was a pretty good booth. And you know, I actually I like Sony as a company, um, in spite of itself. Like the, a lot of its like ecosystem things that I don't really care about, but the actual yeah. products individually, well, it, I do like. In fairness, it's not just Sony that their ecosystem stuff is weird. Samsung has their whole media hub. It's not very good. Yeah, Acer, Acer yes. Acer does yeah. one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's trying to copy the iTunes store. They're, they're eight, ten years too late at this point. Right, but Sony thinks they can do it better because they're in the movie business, they're in the music business. Right. Plus they make, you know, but phones that, and they make TVs. It's interesting though, because being in those businesses gives them vested interests that make it harder for them to make good decisions for the consumer. Sure. Uh, and, 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 and they, you know, good decisions for you and me may not be good decisions for Sony yes. Pictures. Yes. So, um, so, so despite this, stuff, yes, despite the stuff, yeah. we had to get that out of the way because the they had majority cool of stuff. things that we saw there were actually pretty cool. Yeah. Let's, let's go in the order of what we saw first. We, uh, so we saw the binoculars. The macro binoculars. The yeah. Luke Skywalker, remember? Oh, I, mean, I, I remember talking about them oh on my God. the podcast. Are they cool? They are They are super, super stupid, but awesome. Yeah. So, so, so give, me the, give me the quick, yeah, okay. what are they? So remember, it, literally, you know in the Star Wars Episode 4, the Star Wars 1, the good one. Yes, I remember those binoculars. Luke yes. Skywalker, he takes them up off his belt. He's looking for, for R2-D2 and C-3PO. Yes. Click, click, click. There's a little HUD. All of that is there. Okay. It's the, that. And, and it's two sensors on the front, so it's in 3D. So it's like a real pair of binoculars. Oh. You get independent screens in each eye. There's giant eye cups that go around your whole eye, so they shield the whole thing. All that screens. You turn uh -huh. from side High to down. side, and, and, and you're literally, you can zoom in. 20 times, there's digital zoom beyond that. It's all image stabilized, both physical image stabilization and digital image stabilization. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, and you and can, can record. You capture? Yeah. You put a pop SD card in there, take okay. photos or record. 720p, 1080p, 3D video. This it's, sounds like a godsend for pervs it's, everywhere. It's, Gary, it's for bird watching. Yeah, I bet now, it is. Now, hold on. Bird watching is a legitimate hobby. 
It is a niche hobby, perhaps. Birds in the colloquial I, sense? I'm or? talking about things with wings and feet. Okay. Um, this, is, this is one of those pieces of technology mm -hmm. where as soon as you hear about it, yeah. you're just waiting for that first news story of some guy getting you arrested. Know, I hadn't even thought of the perv angle until you said this. I literally... Oh, really? I, we were sitting there, I'm thinking, this is awesome for bird watchers. Because the thing about bird watchers is, okay. you, you, you go out and you take the picture of the bird, and you have a list of birds that you have seen, and you check it off. People who are hardcore about bird watching will travel to different parts of the country just where they haven't seen a lot of the birds that live there. Okay. I'm not one of those people. Do you think that's the... Is, is this... Did Sony say we're going after the bird watcher market? They, he said that they had, a, they had an outing for bird watchers uh, because they were so into this product. And they wow. took them out and it blew them away. But they've got, really, to, they've got to be imagining that there's a market beyond just... That's very niche to say bird Well, watchers. they're a little I bit expensive. It's a very niche product. Yeah. I, like, you really have to struggle to think of... Aside from maybe sports and... You know, recreation. Yeah, I mean, nature. Think of how fantastic it would be if you're if you're like if you have season tickets to football games. You're up in the upper decks, and you, and you want to go down, and you you can use it's your having front row seats, <laughs> right? And you can record the stuff that's awesome. If yeah. you ha can afford a twelve hundred dollar pair of binoculars, no twenty one hundred twenty one hundred dollar pair of binoculars, binoculars right. you can afford better than the nosebleed seats for well, sports games. Well, maybe, but the the nosebleed seats are are a low cost annual expenditure. The twenty-one hundred dollar macro binoculars are are a, a one-time expense. I really don't see them selling a lot of these. You could you could capture every time Tebow takes a knee. Oh my goodness! Every time. If you're listening, Will just took a knee. I took a knee. I a half knee. I didn't I didn't do a full Tebow. Just a half Tebow. Uh, it was very cool technology. Not very. It practical. sounds great. I'd love to check it out yeah. again. This it, is, it, it, does, it seems like yeah. something out there on the kind of the fringe. Well, interesting yeah. part of the Sony yeah. universe. Remember when there were totally. Sony stores and you'd go to the Sony store and there was always something ridiculous that oh, yeah, you're never going to buy? Yeah. The Sony stores, yeah. All the high-end crazy shit that I could never yeah. afford, but it was fun to kind of so laugh at. Gabe at Penny Arcade is well known for going to the Sony store and spending tons of money on ridiculous stuff like robot dogs. Yes. Yeah. This is a yeah. robot dog. This, this definitely is in the Ibo yeah. category. But it's more, it's more useful than Ibo. Right. If you're a bird watcher. Right. But they're not. They're obviously not imagining to sell a well, ton of these. The other side of this is it's, this is the first time they release this product. If this is a product that starts to move, it could become cheaper and more. It, mass yeah, market. I mean, if they keep if they keep iterating, then it'll get mm -hmm. cheaper and better each time. So, okay. digital binoculars you know, are the future. Yeah. It sounds very cool. Everything Do they look sexy? Cool. Do they look kind of high? No, no, they, they look. Real I dirty. thought they look really cool. Well, they look cool. Yeah. But but they're lady repellent. Just I to mean, be clear. it's like it's massive. Or right, I'm going to want to see them later. I'm sure. Yes. I know. Yeah, we'll lots of shot some videos. It's good that you say that because we have a whole video dedicated Wonderful. to these fantastic Wonderful. binoculars. Look yep. I look forward to um, seeing. And we also have some video that we shot with the binoculars. Yeah. So you can see what it looks like. Okay. but not in card. Not obviously not. We didn't do 3D because no. we didn't want to have to, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a pain for those guys to separate 3D images out. To Are they heavy? Formats. Uh, probably about two pound and a half, two pounds. Yeah. I would guess maybe a little heavier. The little though. rings you can put your they were you know, strap in. So you can put yeah. around your neck. You can carry them on your neck without yeah. feeling like you're being. Uh, probably. I think I think they're a little heavier for the neck, but not too heavy for the hands. You might do one of those like one hand under the arm slings, like over the shoulder thing. You could pop up. Okay. Shoulder. George, right George, George McFly. Bird watching yeah. in the tree. There, there, there's a handful of I don't think George McFly was bird watching. Oh, well. uh, they're no heavier than a pair of like big, high power, like right. Yeah, you know, that you have on a boat. Regular binoculars. If you know, if you had a yacht, these things would be badass. If I was your, making a really cool action chamber. movie, right, or futuristic movie, uh -huh. I would use them as a prop. Right. So they would look appropriate. So while we're in the uh, the the stuff stuff for the one percent. Well, let's talk about the next thing we saw was the Vita. Well, I okay. okay yeah, I Vita. think that's for well, the one yeah, percent. Probably too. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm oh, you kidding. saw the you hands on with the Vita. Finally, had hands on right. with the Vita. Everyone, is, it seems like everyone's used a PS Vita except us. After Sony bounced us from their E3 yes. uh, booth this last year at mm -hmm. E3. And it's already out. Yeah. But we saw it on the show floor. Yeah, we got to take hands uh, on. And remember how yesterday we were talking about real, reality distortion effect. Yeah. Right? And. and and from the press conferences, nothing moved us, right? Mm. You know, these sharp dancing, parading with their portable TVs. That was not yeah. exciting. They weren't yeah. going to convince us. That was a lot, a, of, a lot of sizzle on right. the little the, the smart TV on top of the smart car. Like I still sizzle. think that's really Listen. dumb. Yeah. Really, really dumb. There are some fashion models walking around with mm -hmm. TVs. Right. Mm -hmm. Not doing it. In a way that you'll never think of again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so seeing the, the PSV. Yeah. Uh -huh. First, just okay. seeing it. Yeah. I, I described it as... It's how I remember seeing the PSP for the first time. And you have to think back when the PSP first came out, before there were iPhones, yeah. before there were smartphones. It was a huge screen. It was huge for that. I mean, if you look at it now, it looks when low was, When did it come out? 2002? I think it was 06. 06, really? 05, 06. Post, 06. No, it was no, before 06. PS3. 
I think it was. I think it was. Uh, five, can we get a fact check six. from the chat, Matt? Winter. Uh, yeah, we haven't talked checked in with Matt Braga yet. Yes. Do we have uh, any any uh, comments or questions from the chat? Uh, one of the comments is everyone loved Gary Socks earlier. Socks uh, who, who's was, comment? Uh, who who asked? Do you remember? I like uh, the they're our guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember who started. It's, it was just oh, okay. everyone started talking about. People so like the my chat socks. in general likes Gary's yeah, Argyle. The, the tested yeah. viewership has always had very good taste. I, you I, know, and we made a point of not talking about clothes today. I I it was a new. Second 100 episodes. Yeah, good for you. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to completely. We're, yeah. we're ditching the clothes home. talk. Exactly. We're not going to talk about memes anymore. No. Uh, well, no. Well, no, hold no, on. No, 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 no. Let's not no, throw yeah, the baby exactly. out with the bathwater. <laughs> it's 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 time to let things go. It's nope. a fresh no. start. I, I, I no doubt you. Second feel that hundred way. episodes. Oh, it reminds me later on. I got to talk about my uh, my great billboard idea. Oh, this is a terrible terrible idea. So yeah, massive liability. Is that the only comment from the chat? No, there was a bunch of stuff earlier. There. Putting numbers in the chat for some reason. Uh, someone earlier wanted to know, and I think. Well, we was... asked for a date. Okay. Are they dates? Are they in the form of dates? Uh, lots of 60s. I don't know why. I'm uh, pretty sure the PSP didn't come out four... in the 60s. No, I don't know. Everyone okay. would have been no awesome one, if no it did. Inclusive. 2004, Don Draper walking around with a PSP. 05 everywhere else. Yeah, he was just playing Luminez. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everybody yeah. always played with PSPs. So maybe it was 04 so, uh, 05. Uh, let's get back on track. Yeah. You said, did you have like a little uh, uh, like I saw, Eureka, I get I, it now I'm gonna, type I'm going to say, yeah. I saw the five inch screen in person. Yeah. I mean, I, we saw it at E3, but you, you see it, you see it, it's vibrant. It looks really good. Uh -huh. and, um, it was very, I, I immediately felt an urge to give them my credit card. So it made you want one. Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to buy one still. Yes. Okay. Probably. There was a high, high covet later. factor on that. The covet meter went. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm fully, you know, as, as 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 you know, I've been very negative about the Vita, but I'm fully willing to, to beat a retreat on it. If you put it in my hand, I'm like, holy shit, this is great. Well, and after the talk we had last night with those guys, which uh, that podcast will be up tonight. I I just have I had didn't I couldn't I I was up until like three last night. I couldn't do it last night. Yeah, so you you guys are doing crazy amounts as um, it is. So the PS Vita, uh, we got to use the interface. Uh, yeah. Try a game or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, Looks solid. I mean, you keep on forgetting it's it's two hundred fifty dollars, but it comes with basically no storage, and you need to buy the yeah. memory card. You put some so you're looking at three twenty five, three fifty yeah. by the time you buy a game and a memory card. But I think people who are willing to spend that much money on games, and if hopefully the games are you know good enough quality to warrant yeah. that price, well, many then the, I don't think people are going to rip uh, off. One of the things the guy did say is, assuming you're not doing like creation stuff in Little Big Planet, most of the launch games will have yeah. enough storage on the cards in order to play. And what is the U.S. launch there. date? February 22nd. Okay, so just around the corner. Yeah, yes. it's, it's, Don't import one. It's not worth no. importing it. Wait for the U.S. launch. Uh, more people will, will have hands-on time with it. Yeah. You know, since after, or, I, by I mean, then. I, what we'll do, we should buy one for the office and then I'll take it apart. Yeah, okay. That's uh, two videos. Right. Sure. Wow. Absolutely. Two videos. We'll yeah. destroy something beautiful. It's, it's, We're committed It's now. pretty beautiful. What, what was the last um, thing we took apart? It's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, Kindle. Kindle, uh, fourth gen Kindle. Yeah. Oh, okay. The t the non touch, the one with the buttons. Um, I, look for I look forward to, to getting hands on with it. Uh, yeah. Well, also, the, the one thing I did notice though was the load times, at least on these demo units. Well, so they were said very long. Now that we we had we were heavily disclaimed very, on this. Very very long load times. They said that the reason it was slow. I think you were talking to the other guy at this point. This may or may not be true. You know, you, you always know how this how this is on the floor. Um, it said that w because it was an incomplete build. Of the load games. times were slow because they didn't have all the players in the game and it was looking for stuff that wasn't there and that was causing problems. Okay. I don't, okay. I, we'll find out in a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, that, that, that'll come out in the wash yeah. soon enough. Yeah, eight, eight weeks that away, would, basically. I, seven I, weeks away. Long load times would, would long, do that for me. There's no reason to have long load times yeah. on a, on a uh, no. flash memory based yeah. media. I mean, there's absolutely none. Uh, so yeah, uh, pleasantly surprised by the PS Vita. I might have to eat some eggs about that. Uh, I, I think uh, I think I it's... think every one of us made predictions. About well, the I don't PS think Vita. anyone ever. The PS Vita. I don't think anyone ever seriously tried to combat the the notion that it's an impressive piece of hardware. It's no. whether or not it's something people actually want and is going to sell. Yes. Well, I mean, after yesterday's conversation with with Mark and 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 Pactor and those guys, Mark yeah. Brandon Pactor and those guys, you know, I I think I think that Sony probably has a way to make has a business on that. That's going to make money from the audience, from the even if it's a niche audience and it's interested in high-powered gaming. I mean, I thought Mark Rain said they, some interesting, uh, made, made some very good points last night about how if you look at the 3DS and really the history of all major console launches, that yeah. you know a, a lot of a lot of great consoles like the 3DS, like the uh, the Xbox 360, have had very inauspicious launches. You know, yeah. and then after a while, then they found their feet. Um, Most, in fact, have had inauspicious launches. Yeah. I mean, and then the N64 launched with two games. That's yes. right. Maybe it was more than that, but it was a very small number of games. Well, the consoles, yeah. I mean, consoles, you can be in it for the long haul. With, like, smartphones. You oh, really man, can't. don't ever say that. Now, I heard 
uh, Balmer, I'm surprised you guys didn't make any more hay out of this. That Balmer actually said uh, we're in this for the long term at one of his. Uh, I think he did. Yeah. yeah, he did. He yeah. sort of yeah. Windows for the long term was or the Xbox quote. Live, one of those. One I think it's, yeah. it's for Windows Phone Seven, and you know what? I I'm kind of skeptical about that. that I, I think if 2012 isn't good for Windows Phone, then I don't think they're going to put more we've, money. We've said it before. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Okay. Phones and tablets mm -hmm. are the future for Microsoft. If they are not making OSs for phones and tablets, then they uh, their business is yeah. Is phones and tablets is not like a little kind of niche experimenting thing they can just decide they're going to give up on. Like it's pretty pretty fundamental stuff. Right. Yeah. If you have one one or two computers per house and five smartphones per house, mm -hmm. what are they going to make more money selling? Uh, computer OSs or smartphone OSs? Smartphone OSs. Right. Absolutely. Um, I just want to say, Joey. Out of the park on this cup of coffee. I think his headphones on so he can't hear me. It is a great cup of coffee, Joey. A plus, man. Uh, so why have Joey make all my coffee at yeah, the office? I'll yeah, I'm, to, I'm, ready for, I'm ready for another cup. I'll anytime, have to take uh, you your know. word for it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, man. We I know. Thank, a, thanks for the offer. Well, it's, you know, it's... Uh, I, I that's all right. I, 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 I had one yesterday. It's we'll amazing beverage that we'll, no one else here can... We'll, we'll top you off when you're, uh, you know, when, 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 when we take the next break. Okay. Um, also, Tony, last uh, couple of things. We saw the beta uh, mirrorless camera. Well, no. Let's go on the next thing we saw. Speaking of 1% things. And oh, yeah. I know you wanted to talk about. And something that you were personally interested in. What's yeah. that? The 4K projector. Oh, yeah, I was interested God. in 4K. Yeah. So we've talked a lot of smack about 4K, uh, mainly because uh, there's I, no content. I did not talk about... We, smack. There's no reason for 4K with no with no 4K media format. It's, it's a chicken I egg problem. I distinctly remember us all saying that. Chicken and egg problem. Uh, Speaking of eggs. We thought that there would be 4K for uh, passive 3D TV. So you yep. can show 1080p content yep. without, without... Or 2K at least. Yeah, right. Yeah. You show 2K content uh, and you lose... So when, when we say 4K TVs, we mean it's 4,000 lines of vertical resolution. So it's something like 4096 by 2160, I think, is the resolution generally on, on 4K. So it's, it's essentially... Um, as as uh, 1080p is essentially four times the screen space mm -hmm. of 480p, 4K is essentially four times the screen space. Like a t t it's four 1080p sets worth of pixels yes, right, in yeah, one 4K right, TV. Yeah. But where's the content? Well, there are some cameras now that no, that's shoot not right. 4K. It's oh, no, but what it's about? Eight. No, it's it doesn't four. matter. Is it four? It's four. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It's four. Um, so. Uh, Sony has a 4K projector, and uh, they've seen we've seen pictures of it before. 16. And you're thinking too too much of the math. Well, math is hard. Math is hard. Uh, and the projector is actually the first thing is it's really big. It's massive. Um, like how big? Like we th think of home projector because it's, uh, it's look at this table. The home, right. This table is okay. two feet by two feet. Right. It's, it's uh, two feet by two feet by about a foot and a half. Yeah. It, it, if you put it on so that almost table, as big as this end table here, it would be yeah. as big, almost not as tall, but as, almost. Do you remember the, Do you remember the old analog CRT projectors that had a red tube, a green tube, and a yellow tube, yes. and they all were right yes. there, same size as that? Okay. Maybe all a little right. bit so taller. Pretty big. All right. Yes. Um, but uh, as Sony's will be quick to, to let you know, it's mm -hmm. like one third the size of a projector you'd find in a movie theater. Right. A digital yes. projector, which right. is also for. You know, we didn't ask what the bulbs cost on this. Right. Oh, wait, it's L cost because there's no yeah. bulbs. It's, it's liquid uh, crystal on silicon. And you've got to remember, you talk about 4K. Again, it all comes back down to like what is the actual content that's being projected. Yes. Right. We have, they, there are 4K movie theaters and yes. many of the digital projections, but when you're not actually <laughs> watching 4K content even in a movie theater. What even, are you watching in a movie theater? Even Avatar is only 2K. Really? Oh, yes. No so way. I just, here's something else I discovered interesting. So I made, I made a tweet earlier this morning saying, hey, if 4K uh, is going to be a thing, that's great for me because my movie mm -hmm. was shot natively in 4K. Oh, yeah, right. We yeah. got a 4K yeah. re-release and I ended up, ended up chatting with a, with a movie director, a friend of mine who understands a lot about the digital production process and saying, well, you say that, it may have natively, natively been shot in 4K, yeah. but when it goes through the digital and immediate process when the special effects are added in, it gets downscaled to, they would have to redo all the special effects in 4K for it to be truly 4K. It's kind of like Next Generation, they shot it right on tape yes. or film, right? But they, they all so the there's gonna be stuff. My prediction yeah. is gonna be these 4K uh, systems will come out, but in terms of the content, there will be a certain amount of bullshit upscaling going on. There won't be a lot of native, true 4K content it's out very there. very good to know. So, for a long time. Interesting you say bullshit upscaling. Right. Because the, we went in to see this demo, and of course, t demos at CES, it, you don't do a demo at CES if you can't make it the best possible condition. Very controlled. Floor, right? We go into a very, very dark room, mm -hmm. very dark room, yep. uh, about, what, 25 seats probably, yeah. 18 seats. Uh, very, very dark, uh, 10 feet away from the screen. It's a 182 inch screen, yep. a very reflective, good uh, Sony screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we see the demo. 
The demo is three parts. Uh, there's a 1080p trailer from David Fincher's version of, of the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, mm -hmm. uh, upscaled. So yeah, right. we get to see what the upscaler looks like. Yep. Second part is... Did they do any kind of comparison, like here's 1080p? Yeah, and nothing like that. They didn't do a comparison. Okay. No, naturally they didn't do the comparison. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are two... That, that comparison is dangerous, right? Because people with good eyes are going to see things that, that you're, you're really, right. they don't want you to see. Right. Right. And it's also hard for them... Then, then the 1080p side is going to be fake 1080p because the pixels are going to be four times as big. So it's not really going to upscale. Right. Unless they actually... Unless they had two had projectors. A, yeah, one projector and then stopped it and had another one. Right. Side by side. Like that yeah, one. some crazy thing. Yeah. Um, eight megapixel images, native resolution on the, on the, big, on the big screen. So, mm -hmm. so photos. Yeah. Photos. Okay. And then they showed a 4K native trailer for The Amazing Spider-Man, which is yes. being shot on reds. Right. Okay. Uh, so now that we know... Done. Well, everything's amazing, but... The 4K native shot video stuff for the basic Spider-Man. Now we know that because I had CG stuff in it. Yeah. Probably also, you know. Well, I don't know what they're doing 2K. on this. The on this CG new jumped one. out. I thought. I don't, I I've ne never seen that trailer in the theater or up close like okay. that. Okay. In, in terms of like the native 4K live action elements, yeah. we all remember when we saw HD for the first time. We were like, yeah. oh my yeah. god, this, do you have a, is oh, it? Was that leap? No. Well, okay. but here's the thing. The difference is. If you took 1080p and blew it up to that 182 inches, yeah. you would the see pixels the would be the size of a, right. of a, yes. of a right. dime, yes. right? Enormous pixels. It looked like being in a, in a movie theater. It was as good as yes. uh -huh. watching it in a... Well, you movie. remember when we went to IMAX and saw the Dark Knight prologue, how yeah. sharp that yes. image was. Yes, yes. It's, well, that's like that. to do with that's, IMAX camera. Yeah. Right. Um, so it... It's, it was it's the, tough to say without side-by-side -side comparison with this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, you know people who've had home theater, like who have nice home theaters, mm -hmm. but obviously not many of them have 4K projectors. They have 1080p right. projectors. Right. right. Even in a really nice home theater, watching with a four, uh, 1080p projector, right. it doesn't feel like a movie theater, mm. right? You can kind of tell that right. it's like a right. home projector, right. right? This looked like movie theater. Yeah, this, this, cool. this, and it looked like a good movie theater. Right. You know, you've been to good digital projection, you've been to bad digital mm -hmm. projection. This looked like, yeah. this looked really good. Yeah. And the amazing thing to me was even the 1080p one, uh, had they not said this is 1080p being upscaled, I don't think I would have been able to tell on a single viewing. If well, I sat and watched it four or five times in a row, that's kind of I like would have the, been the well, I mean, 1080p I mean, thing, right? If that's, actually, if that's true and that really works, then that's actually great news because eventually we're going to get double dipped again on 4K re-releases of all our favorite right. movies. Yeah. But if the upscaling is actually really good, then that's great that we can take the Blu-rays we yeah. already bought yes. and enjoy them in, an, in also, a new and improved way. It's, you know, they've done that test where they showed people 720p video and then 1080p video. Right. And people can't tell. You can't the difference. tell the difference. At a certain point, you can't tell the difference. Right, and and, and with the four K stuff, especially, it's only going to matter on big TVs. I, I think fifty fifty five inches and bigger. At least. I mean, this was one hundred eighty two inches. That's what uh, thirty feet. No, one hundred eighty inches would be uh, uh, 10, 12, 12? 16 feet, something like that. One hundred fifty. I don't know. Feet? Math is hard. Math no, it's not one hundred fifty feet. No, 15 feet. Fifteen feet. Yeah, there 15 we go. Fifteen feet. This That's is right. the, the lesson is feet. when we're on low sleep. Never do math. Never. Ever. This we're is what not, we have We are not engineers. For. We have a question um, from the chat. Uh, actually, I just wanted to point out, when I was at the Sharp um, briefing earlier, what was interesting is they had two TVs set up. What, they were both 4K. Uh, one was running a 1080p stream, uh, and the other one was running an up-converted 1080p stream. And uh, you could tell the difference. The 1080p stream that was up-converted looked really nice. If so they the hadn't scale is me, good. Yeah, if they hadn't told me it was 1080p right. up converted, I would have thought it was right. This is, so, so this is this is pretty great then. So we can watch yeah. it. We can take all, dust off all our Blu-rays and, and enjoy them. Yeah. In, in TV Quest 2015 fidelity. starts now. So now you were talking about a projector. You said that there are also like at just regular TV screens that are doing this as well. Yeah, these these were 4K panels. Yeah. Okay. And and were were the sharp ones crazy thick? The Sony 4K panels were like nine inches thick. Uh, I can't the remember offhand. They were mounted no, no, no. on the wall. I mean, from the wall. Oh, okay. Wow. Huge. Uh, back to the. I wanted to go back to the scaler. Would you would knowing that it was 1080p upscaled, I knew what to look for and mm. knew where knew where scalers have problems. Uh, looking at the stubble on Daniel Craig's cheek in that trailer, you could see some noise that's a problem with the upscaling. Uh, at the end of that trailer, you know where she's running away, or either toward or away from a lake, and there's kind of gentle ripples on the lake. You see noise there. Uh, it could also have been because the, you know it's kind of he that shot a little bit grainy. I think I haven't yeah. seen the movie yet. Yeah. Um, but it, it was it's a really impressive, really impressive upscale. Right, I'm pretty psyched about it. I, um, I want to I want to see this 4K. So when we talk about being I think for the one percent, this yeah. is a twenty five thousand dollar projector. Holy shit! I yeah. think, and we didn't ask what the bulbs cost. Oh, it's all cost, so no bulbs. Uh, I I think um, I think Steven Spielberg probably already has one in his home theater. Yeah. But I, I, I would Peter say Peter Jackson can afford like 
a collection of red cameras. Right. He probably has one of these for, right. for his own. Yeah, exactly. Studio. All those guys wearing Oakley uh, gas yeah, can exactly. 3D glasses. Uh, let's see, what else? Sony, while we're on this, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the cameras yeah. in a little bit. Right. Um, after Sony, we rolled over to Samsung. Yep. Straight, straight to Samsung. Uh, of course, a couple of things they weren't showing. Uh, mm-hmm. We didn't get to see the TV with the slot. Mm-hmm. No slots on the floor. Oh, I wanted to the see modular, the modular, upper, uh, modular yeah, app the, TV, yes, yeah. the app engine. Why didn't basically. they have that? Uh, I, I think they said it's uh, the the thing that they showed in the press conference is a prototype design. It will be in this year's TVs, but what they showed may not be representative of what the final hardware has. Okay. Um, I wonder if that means we're going to see an MHL device that's an upgrade for that. I mean, it, it may be that there's no slot. That MHL is just the upgrade path much. for that for, stuff. For apps? For apps. Oh, if it's just for apps. Then yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Also, we've talked about the Series 9 uh, laptop, mm-hmm. obviously, already. Uh, a couple of Android devices. Yes. And this is, uh, I think it's going to, uh, people are going to either hate us or totally agree with us. But, you know, I think there have been maybe too many Galaxy tabs. No! Let's, let's see if we can name them all. Can okay. we collect them all? Sure. So the very first Galaxy Tab came out on T-Mobile. Remember, yes. this was a 7-inch running Froyo that we, had, we bought yes. for the office. It was yes. kind of thick, kind of chunky. But remember in my review, I said I liked it because of the 7-inch form. You liked you liked, liked that you could palm it. Yes. And then you put it in the drawer by my desk, and it stayed there ever it, since. So yes. you liked it that much. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I have an iPad. Okay. And then, uh, <coughs> since then, they've released the 10.1. Which was, yes. uh, that was Honeycomb. That's a, a, essentially a, a 16 by 9 yes. iPad. Yes. And uh, it, it was, people called it a big iPad robot. It's the one that they, they're fighting with Apple. It's very on. thin. Yes. It's, it's, it's got it's the same bezel. It's thin. Remember, because yeah, originally, uh, there was actually, they stopped production on the ones they were going to release in Europe because they wanted to make it even thinner. It was the one I saw right. at CTIA. Right. And they, they made the camera worse just to make it that much thinner. Yeah. Under a pound. It was like 454. I do grams. like under a pound. Yes. It's good. It was lo- definitely light. Yeah. Um, so that came out. I don't know if it sold well. Um, and then they had uh, some European releases, the 7.0, okay. then the 8.9 in the U.S. And then here at the show, they announced 7.7 for the U.S. Okay. With LTE and also the Galaxy Note, so technically not a Galaxy Tab, Galaxy Note, uh, which is a 5.3-inch uh, tablet. Well, no. Five, phone. Tablet. Is it a phone or is it a tablet? It's, ga- it's Galaxy Note. Is I read that off the side of a truck. Phone or a tablet? Phone, question okay. mark, tablet, question mark. It's Galaxy Note. So the 7.7 LTE is the... Th- Wait, let's talk about that first because it's okay. easier to explain. Yeah. Getting closer <laughs> back to the 7-inch form factor that Inching, I like. inching toward the Norm's yes. favorite, favorite Android tablet. Yeah. Uh, which was light. also the worst software on an Android tablet also. Yeah, it's still still running Honeycomb. Still the same TouchWiz UI that was on the uh, 8.9. Um, and, I mean, it has LTE, sure, great. But yeah. I... Uh, I'm going to take a, a short break. Hey, Matt, can you keep an eye on my laptop and make sure that it stays recording? If there's any error messages or anything like that, then just uh, you know, give us a shout. Looks looks good. Just check it every once in a while. I meant to ask you that before we started. I realized I didn't. I didn't want to lose the podcast. Sure. So. Um, 7.7 is LTE on Verizon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, I guess this is exciting. I, I, yeah, I don't know why they're still, uh, <coughs> why they're showing, I guess these aren't technically new products because both the Note and the 7.7, which is like a variant of the 7.0, but yeah. they've been out in Europe, right? Yeah. These are just uh, American releases. I don't think they're going to sell well. Everyone's kind of waiting for ice cream sandwich yeah. tablets to come out. Um, holding the 7.7 made me want more than ever an iOS 7-inch tablet. We saw uh, that iPad way. Mini. Yeah, we Whatever saw you want to call we it. saw we saw a lot of gingerbread today. We saw a lot of honeycomb. Yes, I don't think we saw any ice cream sandwich. Well, the Galaxy Nexus was on display in the Samsung yeah. booth. We didn't even look at it because we've already seen it. Yes, um, we you know, we saw an Xperia phone. I forgot about. Oh uh, well, yeah, we can go back and talk okay. about that. Yeah, um, we'll do that after we talk about the about about, about the mm-hmm. note. I, I think that what's I think that what Samsung is doing and some of the other vendors as well is I think that they're just trying new sizes because they think that's the problem with Android tablets. I think they haven't cracked really? the form factor yet. Yeah, it seems like every new one is like one quarter more of an inch this way or that way until right. they really? find the one that people actually No, no. Yeah. I can tell them right now. Seven inches. No, the problem is the software. It's not the size. Well, the Kindle Fire selling really well. No, the tablet, Kindle Fire selling Agree selling. on the seven inch size because Apple is not making one right now. It's their opportunity. And then spend all that R&D mm-hmm. making better UI or, or better UX yeah. and then and it will sell well. Don't don't have ten different SKUs, yeah. five different SKUs. Yeah, but with I, the same UI. When I asked one of the That's people not who was as good as I was, when I asked somebody who was showing a Samsung tablet 
to name the Samsung tablets. We should have done it on camera because it was really funny. Yeah. None of them could do it. Yeah, they're trained to name what's on the floor. I, I understand. But, I mean, there's like eight of them. It's a ridiculous number yeah. of tablets. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the 7.7 LTE looks fine. The touchless stuff looked responsive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who it has been waiting for this, waiting for LTE on a 7.7 inch tablet and would want yeah. to buy this now and couldn't wait. And it's going to be on contract. Yeah, yeah, and couldn't wait for a honeycomb release. Yeah. Or, I mean, ice cream sandwich release. Ice, yeah, I mean, I, ice cream sandwich is clearly yeah. the thing to wait for if you're, on, if you're looking for an Android tablet right now. The um, note was more interesting. Yeah, so the note, um, the note's running gingerbread. First off, three point two point three point seven, yes. I believe. So it kind of is like phone OS expanded yeah. tablet, um, which I, I think they say is it a phone or is it a tablet? I think the fact that it's running gingerbread means it's a phone. It's a phone. Yeah. Uh, it also has a stylus. So do you remember HTC had? I've seen the note. I actually think it's pretty oh, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you saw it earlier. Yeah. yeah. So th it's been on sale. They're just releasing it in the US yeah. now. Um, I think it is pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I'm actually not a fan of that kind of hybrid, that weird twilight zone that exists between like really big phones and really small tablets. So it's kind of like, what is this? Well, you don't carry but a purse. What? You don't carry a purse. Where so do you put that size phone? What are you saying? These these are for, these devices are. For I'm women? saying they don't fit in pockets. Oh. I'm saying you can't. It, it would be a, it, it fit in my jeans pocket. You need like a man bag or something. I, I wear fat guy jeans and they fit, and his... fit in my pocket kind of. Yeah. It's girthy jeans. Yeah. yeah. Girthy it's a jeans. it's a weird it is a weird kind of neither fish nor flesh. Uh, product category, but I like I, I got to play around with the note a little while ago, and I thought it was pretty pretty interesting. Yeah. When, when you say neither fish nor flesh, are we talking about duck billed platypuses? What? Neither fish nor flesh. It's just a aphorism. It just means you know it's not one thing or the other. But flesh what? means mammals. What? Fish means. Is Mo it a meat reference? Move on. <laughs> I don't understand this. I need to. We need. You know, you know, need this to is to just a, this is a, this is a conversational cul de sac that you need to <laughs> you, you think, turn you think out. That no good. No good comes out of this. Okay, good to know. There's a kid in the big wheel at the end of the street. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I, I think the note, the stylus worked really well. It's 250 points of pressure sensitivity. They're really trying to convince people that uh, you know creatives uh, can use this right. for for sketching, you, um, for you know. For big, well, it's, well, it's also great for being like the the, the 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 context that I was demoed it was more in the context of like how it can be useful for like the, the businessman on the go. Yeah. yeah. And it was great for like annotating documents and like sketching little notes right. on. It PDF replaces the napkin in the Right, in yes. The it is a shop. digital napkin. We yeah. did do some writing on it. The writing does work. Um, well, they have real really artists doing caricatures yeah. drawing on it. But right. That's not the real use case. I've never been able to write well on a digitizer. Right. And this actually, I was able to re make something that was legible scroll. What, what they should have had is they should have had a mock uh, a classroom with like and, and hired uh, students to sit there, every one of oh. Galaxy Note, and have a, a, a professor lecture and see at the end whether the notes would be legible. I bet you they would not have been. No. Well, you could do a handwriting class. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So Galaxy Note, it's interesting. I, I think that the fat stylus accessory, the thing, so they had an accessory that they were selling mm -hmm. that basically fattens up the stylus. So instead of being like a DS stylus, very long and skinny, you actually take that stylus and you put it inside this other shell mm -hmm. that makes it like a giant knobbly, like a comfortable pen. to grip pen. Right, yeah, right. exactly. Like a button and everything. A uh, button and everything. Really good. I, th I thought that's a that's a great. Yeah, idea I like for that. Stylus. Again, when you th those styluses that are just kind of like very slim pencils, oh, so hard. Yeah. Ergonomically, to write aren't great. But yeah. when you've got something that's kind of like more bulbous, like a like a like a good fountain pen, it yeah, feels exactly. much more natural in the hand. Yeah. Exactly. I'm so glad you remember back in the day with Pocket PC and and the resistive touch screens, right? You couldn't just write on the screen. There was the pop-ups bottom half of the screen. Yes. We had like the weird finger, like the, the uh, character recognition. Yeah. So I, still, I still way, remember like, learning graffiti. They had that in there. Oh, yeah. What they, a yeah. nightmare. You remember they had the game. What was it? Graffiti Gator or something? You wrote the letter and the gator would eat it or the monster would eat it? God. It was the well, way that you learned graffiti. Useless. In my In my imagination, yeah. I know... I know what the Palm Pilot really looks like, but when I think about it in my imagination, it's like this steampunk device with like fucking brass widgets and it's all made in like mahogany and there's like steam and shit coming out of it. So in fairness, like I, I loved, loved my Palm 3. I loved my Palm 5. They, were, they, they were, suffered by having too many versions too because technology was coming out. The screen technology it was, going so was fast. improving way too yeah. fast. I mean, some guy had the, the good Palm Pilot that could do like color. It was like Game Boy Color. And then there was one that had faster refresh rates, and and then Pocket PC came out, and those were all brick-like. Well, the thing that killed Palm, that caused Palm so many problems back then, was they went from being black and white to being color. And the black and white ones, the battery would last for weeks, or maybe not weeks, but but a three to five days. You charged it twice a week. 
Uh, just like yourself. Remember back in the day, you charge your cell phone every three days? Yeah. Nokia. That was amazing. You had the little candy bar phones. Yep. Um, then, then the color came. And with color came backlights. And with backlights came you know, speaking, overnight speaking battery. Speaking of Nokia, I was thinking about this. Yesterday at the Nokia press conference. You've totally adopted the Balmer pronunciation. Yeah, Nokia. It sounds, sounds weird. It sounds okay. funny. I'm, okay. Um, I should have, uh, should have told to give him a suggestion and talked to him afterwards. And uh, should have said, you know, if you want to sell uh, Nokia Lumia 900s, you got to have a unique app. you got to have Snake on it. Wow. If you had Snake on the Lumia 900, wow. keep, th- that would be, like, really cool nostalgia factor. It would be easy to do. Just bundle it in. Yeah, it's Snake. It's, it's, port it from Linux. It's really yeah. easy. Um, I love Snake. Speaking of battery life, how was your 4S on the floor today, Norm? Shit. Yeah, battery. I, I and hit. even before we got onto the floor, uh, we turned brightness all the way down. I didn't turn it all the way down. But I, turned I turned brightness all the, all the way down. Turned location services off. Yeah. Wi-Fi off. And because on the 4S you can't turn off 3G, I would have turned off 3G and just yeah. used Edge. It was stuck on 3G. Yeah. And battery, I mean, it got to a point where I had four bars, but it couldn't find the data. Yeah. So it was kept on trying to pull, and batteries drained. I would go using by a group, Were you using GroupMe today? Uh, we were. Group yeah. me is killing your battery. No way. From that's text what messaging? I heard. No, that's, that's just what text I heard. messaging. No, no, we're just using text messaging, not yeah. push. Um, okay. It, so it's it, it a was bunch terrible. of text messages. Yeah. Wes and Matt had an extended conversation about where they were going to meet for lunch today. It was like 45 texts in six minutes. I, I opted out of your, your group me group today. Which is wonderful. You can mute. Yeah. yeah. Right? I, mute, I, mute. I don't leave your group, but uh-huh. I mute. Yeah. You, yes. Until I, you know, want so to jump Which is what I said this morning. Because I don't need to be hearing yeah. you going. I'm going over to Panasonic yes. or whatever. The, like, the I don't opt give a shit. ins, social experience. I like that. I yeah. like that idea. Opt I, in, opt out. Right. So I want to be part of the group. Yeah. But I don't want to get all your pause. spam until, until yeah. I want to be invited. It's, it's like the invite Twitter myself. pause button. Yeah. It's, it, it is. It's, it's the timeout. Yeah. 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 So okay. Uh, uh, Samsung. That's it for Samsung. They did have one thing that I want to go back and see. They had a TV window. Uh, okay. I, I saw a video of it. I can't remember where I saw it. It was on. Uh, it was on a site someplace. I, I, I wish I, I would. Uh, not an intentional diss. I, somebody tweeted at me. It's mm-hmm. pretty rad. So what it is is an LCD that has no backlight, mm-hmm. but it's a window, and in in the room it's a touch screen, okay. and I think it's running Windows because it had widgety looking things. It might be Android, but basically, uh, when you swiped one part of it, then it it kind of Venetian blinds up, and the back went from being black to being trans. Because LCD. You're talking about Tony Stark's uh, window. Mm, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't illuminating. Oh. It was just uh, blocking. So it was okay. transmissive. So what happened was the room behind it was the light was on, mm-hmm. and when you slid it, the the LCD went from being black to being what would be white in a traditional LCD, uh, meaning that all the light from inside came through. So you just looked into the room. So it was like a it was like a two way mirror, a one way mirror, but with uh, widgets and stuff up on it. Uh, like weird. a desktop. It was really weird. We got to go find it tomorrow because it looks super cool. Right, yeah. yeah. That's the cool future shit that I want to see. Yeah, I, 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 I come yeah. to CES to see the future. Right. Not the same. Not know, 50 Android, Android tablets. Presentation yeah. I saw last yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't want to talk about that again. Okay. Um, after Samsung, mm-hmm. was that all we saw at Samsung? We didn't go look at so. appliances. No, we didn't um, really care about the appliances. Uh, TVs. Yeah, we'll, we'll do TVs tomorrow. The bezels are thin. Uh, you know, and when we say the bezels, cameras are tall. tall yeah. Hold on, you got, we got to explain this because right. we say, "Oh, bezels are thin." Blah blah blah. TVs. Are. Um, we don't mean the TVs are thin from the screen to the wall. What we mean is that the space between the gl- edge the of the picture glass, goes all the way to the edge. Picture well, goes almost a quarter of an inch. Right. Yes. Amazing. Looks really cool. Yeah. I mean, you you just bought a TV. Yeah. So you don't care. I don't care. Because you're, in your head, you're not buying another TV for yep. at least six years. Six years. Yep. Yeah. If you have not bought a TV yet, the bezel-less TVs are actually, I think, pretty awesome. Uh, and yeah. Samsung and LG seem to be the ones that are leading the charge. In yeah, that. I saw a picture of one on well, the Tesla. Well, they're leading the charge. Have chosen that beach to fight. They're well, uh, definitely. There are intensive marketing battles happening that we never hear about where they say, okay, what do we think consumers care about more? Yes. And what do we think that the other guys go, can do? And they will say, our consumers have told us yes. that we want, they want the we, no bezels. And then the other press conference say, our consumers have told us yes. that they want four colors as opposed to three. Yes, and our consumers have told us that they want more HDMI ports. Mm-hmm. That's true. Everybody wants more HDMI ports. Yeah, I'm always running out of HDMI yeah. ports. Um, after that, we went to, we, well, we grabbed lunch. Let's talk about Nathan's. I've, I have, okay. even on the live stream, yeah. I said, 
Don't go to the hot dog place. Hot dog place is a trap, right? Where did you Where did you guys eat, Matt? Matt Braga and uh, Wesley. Oh. You know, there's a Pink's hot dog. I don't think right there's here a, in the oh. hotel. I don't really. Where yeah. Where did I what? Where did you eat? Where Are did you, you guys eat for what? lunch, Braga? Lunch? Yeah. Where did you guys get yeah. lunch? Oh, we just went to the press thing. Oh, they got free press lunch. Free food. Oh. Um, they, yeah. Did you see the 45 tweets about that? Uh, okay. Yes. Oh, I'm at one end of the hall. Oh, I'm at the other end of the hall. Wait, are you not by Ben and Jerry's? No, I'm by D Link. I almost muted them. They just kept going. I know. I had enough yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so, so what did you eat for lunch? Nathan's. In my defense, you guys were terrible yesterday. Absolutely terrible. Like in the same way, you were trying to find what? What do you? This is why I find my friends. Was yeah, made. Oh. You yeah. Can, you you should have just used that. Keep asking each other. Where then we'd you have are. to be you just see a pin on a map and walk mm-hmm. towards that. Yeah. I don't think it would work though. It, it would. Yeah, yeah, no way we would have gotten enough yeah. data. Yeah, maybe that. so. So what did you have for lunch? Uh, we went to Nathan's Hot Dogs. I, I think Nathan's makes pretty good hot dogs. Oh uh, yeah. I was a. It had a huge line. It moved incredibly quickly. Are these and, the same hot dogs that you use for the contest every year? Uh, for what contest? Nathan's does oh, the yeah, yeah. hot dog. Nathan's does the hot dog. Yes, they sponsor. How the hell? Can I'm sure one man eat 50 of those I don't think they eat the full size ones that we ate. You're Asian, you tell me. Normal. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> what have so, I done? <laughs> so racist. Legitimate Dude, racism Joey here Chestnut tonight. Joey Chestnut is Oh my champion. god. You should have said well, you're, no, but that, but you're that from Japanese, the Bay Area. That, that Japanese dude was for all those years. Yeah. Kobayashi. 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 Yes. The Kobayashi Maru. Yeah. That's right. No, that's a different Kobayashi. Oh. That's a, If he had a cat. The Kobe, he's closer if he, to if the usual cat, suspects Kobayashi. Kobayashi's Maru. But no, there's a there's a Pink's uh, hot dogs right here in Planet Hollywood as well. So you can check that out. But no, Nathan's does make good hot Nathan's dogs. Nathan's is rad. Uh, and we had we had a new form of hot dog I've never seen before. Mm. So Drew and I were in line. The line moved so fast that from the end of the long line, it, we got from the end of the long line to the front of the long line in the time it took Norm to go to the bathroom. I just want to say, yeah. I think that your audience is like so sharp now that even... As they hear that you're moving into a hot dog discussion area, <laughs> that they're cracking their knuckles over the meme generators, just <laughs> waiting to see where this is going to go. Per our earlier conversation, I thought we were going to discuss this on the <sighs> podcasting. We're going to we're going to let this let this let this kind of run its course. Hundred episodes is enough. That's no, it's I not. I, I I disagree entirely. Uh, okay, new form of hot dog. Uh, you've had a corn dog before. Hot dog on, yeah. on a stick. Love dipped a, in love a good corn dog. Corn batter yeah. fried. Love it. Delicious, a wonderful treat. Wonderful thing. A little bit of mustard on there goes goes with anything. It's yeah, fantastic. I agree. Uh, Drew and I were in the line, and we were thinking we had a, an entire con- we couldn't decide. We thought one hot dog probably wouldn't be enough, given the amount of walking that we did today and the kind of calories burned. And just the and, and you counted your level. steps. You actually, uh, well, yeah. you, you are burning a, a lot bit. of calories, and you've yeah. got to get your uh, your energy. Right, one nitrate sickle isn't enough. Yeah. So uh, we were. They had other food at Nathan's. I didn't realize this. They had chicken tenders, which we got some chicken tenders. But they have these new things called hot dog nuggets. Mm. Do you know what a hot dog nugget is? Uh, it's like, like little, little corn dogs, but like popcorn. It is. It is. Yeah. It is a corn dog. Uh, it, yeah, it's They're like a chicken nugget nuggets. sized corn, corn dog. dog nuts. Yeah, we, we get it. Oh my god, good stuff, great. right? Unbelievable! It's yeah. the perfect ratio of hot dog to, to corn batter. Yes, but one, very good. one bite each. I feel like just pop it. Yeah. In. yeah, this podcast is brought to you by Nathan's Hot Dogs. Corn nuggets, Sweet. hot dog nuggets, They're delicious. I, 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 I like. I, I do like Nathan's. They do. They, they make good hot dogs. <laughs> hey Matt, any questions from the chat? Uh, I, I I don't know right now. Why not? Um, because I <laughs> make sure the lights aren't red, Matt. No, no, the the lights aren't red. Okay. I, I I posted a link to a Tumblr called Corgis in Space. Good. It's good. It's good. It's, it's helping everybody a, stay on track. It's exactly. It's, <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Oh my God, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Oh man. I was gonna call this a uh, no no compromises, but it might be corgis in space now. You know, I'm sure that the people listening to the audio version of the podcast are enjoying. Well, uh, there are computers and, probably. In yeah, all okay, honesty, though, questions. Some someone actually is asking about Intel. Use names, um, Braga. Okay, sorry. Um, Tech Rocket Nine uh, has asked a few times now, but Intel's Android uh, smartphones that we saw, we yeah, saw it. X86. Uh, I, I had brief hands-on. Uh, it is clearly an early prototype. I, I, uh, there's the Verge. There's a hands-on with the Verge right now. Um, there's going to be a hands-on with us. Yeah, you guys are don't go, throw you, us under the bus. I, I forgot that you guys went over to see him. I'm sorry. Kind of an um, asshole. I do not feel like uh, they should have probably shown those at this point in time. Uh, they, they are they the ones that they had in their booth seemed real real early. You tweeted something earlier today, Will, that I thought painted quite a, a, a quite an underwhelming, depressing overall picture of CES. You said that it was something like 1.8 million square feet of CES, yes. and all the cool stuff could probably fit into an area the size of a basketball. No, I said all the awesome stuff. Oh, okay, 
So the, the things that make me genuinely excited, the 4K projectors, yeah. the... Um, the binoculars. The, the macro binoculars. Yeah. Uh, the the, the Sony, slot in the, the, the slot. Which wasn't the even there. App engine. Okay. You said that wasn't there. Well, okay, that TV, the, 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 the picture window, if we see that, yep. it turns out to be yep. cool. Yep. Stuff like that. You, the, Condense the entire show into a basketball. No, court. I think the hunt is fun. I think oh, the hunt the floor, is the challenge. I think you know finding the treasure, finding the gems yeah. is fun. Parsing through the bullshit, you know. It's, I'm not. Let me, I'm not let saying me, I'm unhappy I want to go back to the, I want to go back to the 4K question because we're talking about these crazy, these crazy thin, yes. uh, you know, OLED bezel mm-hmm. free TVs and stuff. We're also talking about 4K. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, what's what's going to be the transition to the at, life cycle at some of point, these technologies? At some point, we're going to have a. Uh, there's going to be a tough decision. You're going to have to decide. Do you want 4K? And fat, or do you because, want? Because you know we're always looking to future proof. Yeah. Do we need to be thinking about 4K in our TV purchases this year or what? I know. I no. think I think real. Unless you are spending a ridiculous amount of money on TV, right. I think you're probably thinking about. Uh, unless you lease TVs, like people lease Mercedes. Do, right. Can you do that? I don't think you can do that. And, and, even, if you, and, and again, even if you were to buy a 4K TV, there's not much you're going to be able to do with it in the in the, well, the upscaler. Future. Right. Blu-ray. The Blu-ray, cool. the Blu-ray looks like like it did with the with the Fincher right. thing. Right. Um, I, I think I think 4K is a TV after next for everybody who's not buying a TV in next year or the year after. Right. So if you, if you're looking at if you're thinking oh I, if you're like mid life cycle on your yeah. TV then the 4K could be the, your next purchase a couple yeah. of years down the road. If you if you bought say a 2005. Uh, HGTV. If you bought into right, 1080p in right. 2005, wow. I think you you wow. you try to stretch that TV until yeah. 4K is or back at then, least 2K. Back then, those HGTVs didn't even have like tuners built in. They're just monitors. Well, so yeah, they, yeah. yeah, HG ready. Yeah, is the word HG you're ready. looking for. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, where were we? we? Were at Panasonic? No. Yeah, we're at Panasonic. Oh, we had lunch. Yes. The corn, the hot dog nuggets, wonderful. Yep. Can't recommend them enough. Yeah. I mean, I, I, where was that? The convention center? That was the convention center okay. in the Nathan's. Uh, Five dollar hot dogs, though, man. Damn. Yeah, it's convention prices. I know, I know. But anyway, bring a packed lunch if you want. Um, I'm not packing my lunch. Thing bring a brown thing. bag to the Samsung. Yeah, What's that? Sit down Is on that the floor. U- USB keys? No, it's a strawberry sandwich. Yeah, we made a tactical error at Nathan's today. Really, really messed up. What's that? Uh, we were sitting there eating hot dog nuggets and and hot dogs, and there was a power plug right there on the counter. Oh, really? Yeah, right oh, between Drew and me. Not utilize. And we did not plug in. Wow. It was a big mistake. Wow. Rook move. Rookie move. After lunch, we went to Panasonic. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be great to you have know, those things that were like Wi-Fi finders if they also were for power outlets? I'm sure, like put like, something like, like NFC. Like or some RFID chip and all the power outlets where you yes, walk like beep beep beep, exactly. beep 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 like hunting for you know your yeah like Ghostbusters you get the little yeah, <laughs> yeah and you get near power and then you get there and there's some dickhead who's already using it yeah, yeah that's of course a well they should that's why they should deactivate yeah it needs to, yeah, needs to in, make sure that right? it's free yeah oh million dollar idea the, yeah. you know the other thing you could do is just tap into the municipal database twenty four or Mission Impossible style download the plans for the building where they have every outlet uh, memorized and oh, and well, it just you know you says oh, okay you've got thirty feet on the left thirty feet on the left that's what Ethan Hunt would really use Mission Impossible powers for finding right. plug for his iPhone right um. Panasonic. Uh, we saw a couple things in Panasonic. It was kind of a bad year for Panasonic. Yeah, that's and they too exciting. Big TVs. Yeah, they always have big TVs. Yeah, they, they, they're leaning hard into apps this year, which I think is a bad move. Really hard. Because apps, uh, uh, apps remains unexciting. Well, to be fair, Panasonic, because uh, you, you both have Panasonic TVs. Yeah, and you both I love my said, TV, just to be clear. You rarely use, if ever. Once. Uh, once. The first time when you turn on for, TV. The first time I plugged it in, I had a spare Ethernet cable, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm going to see what the app yeah, stuff see is what like. The app's and like, then I never have switched it again. It's terrible since then. Yes. Uh, it didn't look any faster no. than it did last year, because the software was going to be backward compatible. No. They had two new features that we tried out. Um, one was, to be fair, something that I've talked about wanting on a TV, which is the, like the Twitter overlay. Yeah. Right? So that you know, was pretty cool. Take the bottom, like, a, like instead of the, the, um, the ticker on, on ESPN, yeah. have like a ticker for your tweets. Oh, like your friend's tweets. Right? Or, or hashtags or, yeah, sur- or searches. searches. Right? Uh, and they had that. Uh, it was still very, I think, very like, early implementation, even though it looks a final product. Do you think that that's wife friendly, Gary? If you, if like you're sitting at home and you flipped up the Twitter, because we can get this on our TVs. Yeah. This will work on our TVs. Oh, okay. Uh, if we popped up the Twitter overlay, is Leah going to be well girlfriend friendly in your case? Yeah. Uh, is she going to be okay with that or not so much? Um, if we could put both our feeds on there, no, sure. No, just one. Uh, uh, I don't even know if I even want it. 
You could make a well, custom. Imagine search. if you're. I don't need. I mean, you know, as you know, I love Twitter. I love the social medias, but yeah. I don't need it. I don't need to be looking at it every minute. Right. Imagine a world, Gary. Well, I think they want people to have like, uh, you know, they're watching X Factor or something, and they yeah. have like hashtag for X Factor, and you right. see or all just those, a search. Right. Right. All right. All those right. tweets. Yeah. But I mean, like that makes sense. Right. But also, if you're going to have your phone or tablet on you, it's also easy just to look. Glance down. That's true. Yeah, it's I mean, much exactly. faster to type out a response. Exactly. Right? Well, you know, you can't respond from that. You can't respond from the TV. It's just a app. view. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, if it was context aware, that might be more interesting. I think a lot of people don't watch live TV, yeah. and probably the kind of people who would be using a Twitter app on the TV are less likely to be watching live TV yes. than, say, uh, my mom. Mm. I think if that app was better implemented, like smoother interface, quicker to load up, yeah. easier to use, and was on more TVs, it would encourage more people to like use Netflix to watch things at the same time. Like, Definitely true. Because of the whole get glue phenomenon, yeah. like, people like you know watching things simultaneously, maybe people not live really content, I think people do. Yeah. I mean, judging by what like Anna did. Um, like using like the Netflix party system. Yeah. You know, if, if that doesn't exist if, anymore. I know it doesn't exist anymore. If you know a content provider pushed Party's over. If Netflix pushed and here is at eight PM Eastern the debut of rest of development. Yeah. Right? On okay. Netflix streaming, right? Everyone would watch it that night and then it could be it, you know that would that would be an interesting way to counter like live I, I have I have live to say I, I have to say I miss event T V. Like I remember, you know, you used to, we we went over to Gary's to see the premiere of Walking Dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we we've uh, used to go get together and watch TV in college when you lived. That's because you have no people. friends anymore. Not because there aren't events. Oh man. Game of Thrones, season two. That's oh. a big event. I, yeah, Veronica's yeah. having a big Game of Thrones two uh, uh, season. You were invited. Party. We were invited. Oh. <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> That's awkward. Event TV exists. Man, I didn't watch the first season though, but I read the book, so I know what's going on. Okay, all right. Um, I guess the, uh, Gene and I will just I'll just watch it at home. I'll you like myself. staying at home. You live. I do far like. Away. I do you like can like host the event. I if you hosted yeah, the event, then I have to clean the house. You no, know, broadcast the show and they will come. That's true. I'm not watching it on a 15 inch screen. <laughs> it's 55. Thank you very much. What is? My TV. Well, yours was 58. Oh, 58. Yeah, 58. Yeah, it's plenty big. It's a small room. Okay. It's all about the size of the wall. All right. Uh, so at uh, the Panasonic yeah. booth, other thing we saw. And it's, oh, it's, yeah. It's good segue. This is though. good. Yeah. Uh, we finally saw some good cameras. And this year, uh, I said at CES, the thing I would be most excited for is uh, digital cameras. Because I, yeah, I, so I thought what's, digital what's, camera. What's the big trend I'm in reading digital up cameras on this year? It's still, it's still mirrorless cameras. Right. So uh, Fuji... Um, uh, well, Fuji released one last year, the, um, the X, X100. So the, the Matt X Pro, Matt yeah, X Pro one was yeah, for this one, year, and um, the uh, the Panasonic GX one, and then it's back at the Sony booth, the NES, uh, Sony NEX so, seven. So the Panasonic GX one is a throwback camera, right? It's a it's, it's a not, traditional kind of body style with digital innards. When you say throwback, uh, it's actually more of a throwback to like two years ago. Oh. So when they launched the GF1, okay. very popular mirrorless camera design, had manual controls, but since then that line has kind of shrunk into a more of a the point and shoot upgrade. Okay. So the GF3, which Drew bought, we did the quick look on, uh, still the same sensor as the GF, uh, GF1, okay. but it's you know no uh, electronic viewfinder, no manual control for your um, uh, physical control for your manual modes, uh, but it's still a great camera. Yeah. A lot of people love the manual controls. So this is there a way to bring those, that, those features back in a new line? So it's, in that sense, it's okay. a throwback. It's a reboot, but it's also pretty expensive. So it's the GF3. It's GX1. GX1, okay. Oh, um, God, so it confusing. Came out, it came out uh, late last year, and it's still kind of hard to find, uh, which is why we haven't had hands-on time with it. Um, I like that a lot. It's like limited the numbers, too. They're not shipping that many. Yeah, they're not right? shipping too many. A lot of it's because of uh, the flooding and stuff and the and manufacturing. Thailand and all yeah. that. Okay. Uh, but the GX1, which Panasonic fans, Micro Four Thirds fans, uh, are really excited for. I mean, I think they'll be happy with it. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, there are a lot of Micro Four Thirds lenses you can buy. People yeah. are invested in that. It's kind of expensive. That's like the $900, $950 price range. Um, for that camera with with the lens, I mean you're you're, um, you're in DSLR price. Yeah, then you're point. already in DSLR price. I think so. The mirrorless yeah. line, I think it's way more interesting as a way to kill point and shoots and yeah. to teach people photography than as a uh, 
way for DSLR uh, lovers to get a smaller camera. What, what do you get when you go from a $600 to a $900 mirrorless camera? N not that much. You get the manual dials. They realize okay. that the cameras, see what Sony and Olympus and Panasonic realized yeah. was that these sensors were so good that they, they, when they first released them at the $500, $600 price points, yeah. uh, people were buying them. They were great buys. So they had to kind of dumb them down. Mm, it's so sell they, around 300 days. So they could kind of do another, you know, segment the market yeah. a little more. Um, uh, so, so, okay. So these $900 mirrorless cameras, though, yeah. I, it seems like from talking to the Sony guys, which we'll get to in a sec, mm -hmm. it seems like they're pushing these as upgrades for people for who've already model. invested in glass yes. for whichever form, yes. format they happen to be using. So, for example, yeah, if you bought you know a GF3, if you, if you bought a GF1 a while ago and you bought a right. bunch of Micro Four Thirds lenses, there's not much room for you to go right. uh, in terms of you're, you have to be excited, basically, for the next Micro Four Thirds camera, right. and this is it. You can't buy you know a T3i, you can't buy you know a Canon, a Nikon D4 or anything. So what um, what's re resolution and all that stuff on, the, on this camera? Uh, I think on the... Uh, on the Panasonic, it's 16, uh, which is up from 12 on the, the GF one, okay. and it's supposed to have better uh, low light. It's really explicitly called that yes. out, yeah. And faster AF, it's really really fast focus. Okay. Uh, it's still a contrast detection focus, not phase detection as you'd find on DS uh, on a on a DSLR. Okay. Uh, it's very technical stuff. I know I'm boring a lot of people, but okay. I mean for camera junkies, it's it's interesting. It's good. Um, um, and, and we then, also saw the Sony yeah, Sony one. Yeah. So like I bought the C3, which I yeah, love. which it looks great, and I know you're, you're yep. a big fan. Yeah. Gary's tuned out. Of uh, the no, I'm talk. listening. Okay. And and the NX7 is their higher and the highest end um, uh, NAX line, a mirrorless interchangeable lens camera on, okay. the, on the Sony side. Use their E-mount. Again, it was released, but very limited supply. You okay. can be, like, ve find very few of them. It's not a wide release yet. They're still waiting for March for that. And I think people, who, again, who have invested in the E-mount System. That's Sony's yes. proprietary or one. the A-mount system with the E-mount adapters. What's uh, A-mount? That's the Sony. The, that's the, the Sony the SLR? Tele, that's the uh, telephoto okay. ones, yeah. Um, this is the one that they're waiting for. So um, the Sony they're selling without glass. Yes, the body is $1,200. Oh my God, that's a yeah. lot for mirrors. You can get a 4050D yeah. for that. Yeah, exactly. So that's, wow. Yep. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I'll be interested to see how that sells. That's. I think that's if, I, if you had to put it to me and you had to say, here is the Sony NEX7, and I didn't have any glass at all. Yeah. So I'm going cold, and uh, and I don't plan on buying you know tons of glass. I'm buying like three lenses I really like. But if I had either the Sony X, NEX7 mm -hmm. or a T3i. Yeah. I would go with the T3i. Well, I don't want to... Okay, so I don't want to put the Rebel T3i. Rebel, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want to put words in, in Gordon's mouth, but I know you've been talking to him about this because yes. he's a diehard DSLR mm -hmm. guy. Um, and he was asking me a bunch of questions about the mirrorless that Sony mirrorless yeah, came yeah, the other day. Yeah. And I said, dude, just, just talk to Norm. He, I, he's I, had a, the, he, I had a wonderful he, conversation with Yeah, him. so where did you guys end up with that? I'm uh, he know actually he wasn't getting it for himself. He was getting it for his, uh, his cousin, but he okay. was really impressed by the low light, okay. uh, as I was, uh, the low light quality so, on, those, on the sensors. Somebody does a good job with yeah. low light sensors, more, more so than I think anybody well, else Well, it's right a full APS-C size sensor, which is what helps. Right, yes. okay. Um, anything else on the mirrorless stuff? Do you want to? No. I mean, we'll uh, be seeing more of those. Uh, Matt saw the uh, the Fuji uh, X Pro One. He's going to write up for that. I believe right now, possibly or soon tonight. Um, okay. And so that'll be on the site. Okay. Yeah. Um, after Panasonic, we kind of wandered the hall for a little bit. We saw we saw some stuff. I don't want to spoil anything, but it'll be in the day wrap up video. We saw some silly stuff. We saw some serious stuff. Uh, weird things happening in the Nikon booth, man. I don't want to get into specifics. That the weird, weird shit in there. Wait, Drew, are you are you talking about the photo shoot stuff they were just, doing? Just just don't. Oh. We, it's, oh, okay. Drew at one point looked over. He's like, "Yeah, I, I want you to know, I feel very uncomfortable." Yeah. Yeah. So um, so that they happened. They're catering to my my cosplay photography. It's, it, uh, I feel like I've heard as much detail as yeah. I as I need. Yeah, it was a it was. We there's no need to, to go yeah. into any more graphics. Oh, uh, we walked through Polaroid. I was looking to see if the Gaga glasses from last mm -hmm. year. You know. Uh, they 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 look uh, like they might be OLED there was glasses. Zero Gaga influence on the Polaroid booth. Uh, I Thank saw Gaga goodness. influence at Dolby. Really? Well, there was we saw a Gaga massive banner. At Gaga Dolby. banner. Yeah. But last year there was a press conference where Lady Gaga came up on stage yes. and they they anointed her the creative yes, director. Yes, and we all of, knew that was nonsense the yeah. minute it happened. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm glad to see that that's gone. Will I am is the creative director or something too? I can't remember what it what it oh, was that's now. That's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, so celebrity endorsement is, is the new yes. creative director, it turns out. Uh, we said that last year, as I recall. Uh, Polaroid, we went through there. We also went and saw the iCade. Mm. So uh, this, is, this is 
It's a weird story because it's do a product. You know, again, do you know anyone who owns one? Yes. What is this? Do you remember when Think doesn't, Geek doesn't oh did the, the thing show? that you put the iPad in and it looks yeah. like a retro arcade, okay. right? So it was released on April first, like right. as as a joke. So right. Think Geek people wanted it and they made it real. Well, not no. What happened was Think Geek had it up, and the guy who like runs Ion, right, right, Ion inventors. makes the high end drums. Yeah, they make yeah, they brought iPod drums. accessories. Yeah. Right? yeah, the high end. Uh, a right. lot of music stuff. Yes, music accessories and stuff. Turntables. Called Think Geek and said, "Hey, we can make this real product. I think people are going to buy this." And guess what? He was right. Mm. People bought them. I don't know a they single person a of them. that owns one, but apparently a lot of people bought yeah. them. I mean, it, well, it's 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 kind of a dads and grads gift, right? You think about it, like somebody has an iPad, likes Pac-Man. Yeah. Okay. It's a good yeah. way to play Pac-Man. And Atari came out with their version of it. Very yeah, exactly. As well. Do you remember when we were talking about in Christmas, like we hate getting gifts, get, like technology gifts? Yeah. Because this is exactly the type of product that if I receive it as a gift, I wouldn't know what to do with it. It's just gonna go in the closet. Exactly. I, it's see, a no, it's a novelty, it's a novelty gift. gift. Well, so. Yeah. I think the big one that looks like an arcade cabinet yeah. probably fits in the go in the closet category. I think no, the, I think that's cool because, you know, yeah, you're not going to use it every day, but it's at least a conversation piece. Yeah. I mean, it may be something if you have a big, you put it on the shelf behind your desk and then kids come over. It has, it has the, the retro, yeah. you know, it looks like an old shrunk down arcade cabinet. It's cool just to look at. Yeah. So it's an eight-way it joystick. Yeah. Yeah. It does work. Yeah. It works really well. Yeah. Uh, it uses Bluetooth to communicate. It's a Bluetooth keyboard. I, mean, I think it's genius batteries solution. are... Yes. A, a plug-in or something. I don't know exactly how it works, but um, uh, really cool. We liked it last year. We did a video with it. Uh, actually, stopped by again to see them this year because I, you know, there's a lot of kind of shit iPad accessories out there, and this one is definitely gimmicky, but also it works really well and, and kind of it, it fills a void because one of the big things that's a problem with the iPad is it, playing games that require precise digital controls, like you do with a like you, with a stick, like are bad. Pac-Man is unplayable with touch controls. Touch I controls think. do not work for even if you use games, something right. like the fling, right? Even or, the fling is bad. That little joystick knob that we, we yeah, did, none of them yeah. are good, right? Uh, except for this, it's, and it's just because it's Bluetooth digital controls. Yes. Eight-way joystick, uh, eight-button arcade layout. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think it's I, it's kind of expensive, ninety nine bucks. But, but the games have to be coded to support it, right? But there's it's not two work with just anything. So they open the API to do this. They he said they have two hundred fifty games that support this right now. Yeah, all the Atari stuff in that giant Atari collection that supports digital controls. So Centipede obviously isn't going to work, but but all the other stuff that's in there that supports that I believe is in the list. Pac Man, a lot of the Namco stuff. Uh, Galaga. I mean, honest to God, if you have Miss Pac Man and Galaga, I'm super stoked. That's where that's where I want. Yeah, to Galaga go. alone. Yeah. And the aspect ratio on the iPad is right for the old uh, sideways orientation uh, arcade, oh, arcade totally. games. Oh, totally. Yeah, it looks great. Um, so there's two new iCades. Uh, yeah. The first is uh, is a, is a it's just a slot basically. It's like a dock that you jam your iPad into. That's what the Atari one, one looks like. Uh, yeah, it looks a lot like the Atari one. It takes up a little bit less less space. They call it yeah. the core, and it kind of looks like you know those uh, joysticks that you buy for home, like Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. Right, it's yeah. like that. It's like a yeah, it looks like a, like a but with, with a, a slot. slot, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other one was the Move. Is that what it's called? No, the no. Mobile. Mobile, exactly. So, and a lot of people have been asking, you know, Apple. I mean, hope because people play obviously games on their iPhones, uh, but no physical controls make some games kind of difficult, right? Platformers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this allows you to then pl add buttons to a platformer for that, right? Phone. Or add yeah. one touch. Yeah, so uh, they had Moss Speedrun set up, yes. which is a uh, side-scrolling platformer, Mario-style, very difficult game with touch controls yeah, especially. Yeah, like a Super Meat Boy-esque game. Right, requires a lot of precision, uh, touch anything and you die mm -hmm. basically, except yep. for power-ups. And, uh, and it's a, the PSP format worked pretty well for it. I mean, it's a little chunky, that thing. So it also uses Bluetooth, and you basically have this rubber case, you put the iPhone in it, and you have buttons, you have a D-pad on the left, mm -hmm. you have uh, two buttons on the right and the shoulder buttons, and they all map to Bluetooth keyboard commands. Right. And then the game, just, you know, they programmed for a couple hours, added the f compatibility in the game, and uh, there was basically no latency. I wasn't the biggest fan of the design. I think it made it a little chunky. It's a little, yeah. well, it's a little, it looks a little cheap. Yeah, right, it looks, like, I, I think that was like a prototype, but even the design right. itself, yeah, I, their philosophy enough. is to make it a sturdy grip. It's not like a subtle like DS style D-pad right, right. or buttons. Um, I, I couldn't see myself having this, anyone having this in their bag. For example, it's like play at home. Play games Maybe at home. like if you have a bad commute, if you're riding the train for two hours each way, I could see that. Um, it's a neat device. I'm interested in seeing that. I'm really interested in the core. I want to. I, I think there's some more potential with that product. I think we should get one, get one in, and, and do some yes, stuff with it. Yes, I think there's definitely interesting. Well, no, yeah, you've always written it off as a as a gag gift and, and nothing more. I, I I after thinking about it some more today and, and talking to the guys and and I, th I think we. we I don't want to say anything. We were okay. inspired. 
Yeah, we were inspired. I, I immediately thought of Some, something. You know, like you, to do. again, like with the Vita and many other things, it's easy to to you know write off a lot of things in your mind, and it's not only when something you get hands on you that it clicks. Well, I, well, I wouldn't say that. Okay, it's a little different. There was no reality distortion effect. I would say that we saw some potential in it for th- something after that after we talking to. to them. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, the other thing I would say is I always thought that the assuming that the app support came, which it which it has, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Like when it launched and it had no app support, it's much less interesting than now when when it has a shitload of app support. It's a much more useful product at this point. Um, and that's pretty much it. We went back to the press room after that. Walked yeah. through Intel. Uh, that's when we got some hands-on with the uh, Medford uh, uh, smartphone, the Atom-powered smartphone, basically. The, uh, uh, what else do we see? Anything? Weren't you There's... hands-on with the Lumia 900 today? Oh, uh, that was yesterday. Oh, yesterday. That okay. video's on the site now. Yeah, I saw the video today. Yeah. That's right. Um, I'm still, Look still, good. Still like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah, excited about that. Um, I, so I heard a couple of rumors on Twitter. I don't. I didn't get to read the stories attached to them. That the 800 is being quietly released in the U.S. Uh, now. Ballmer mentioned it yesterday. He said that there would be uh, unlocked ones in the growing number of Windows stores. Oh, so you can just go to the store and buy one, Windows, but at full price. Windows stores. How many Windows stores are there? Microsoft stores. Microsoft stores. Five or six. Right. There's so one in Arizona. The, one the in the growing number of Microsoft stores. Uh, not. I guess there's. Yeah, there was one in Arizona. There's one in the Bay Area. I soon. think. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, there's. Yeah, we'll totally we should go. Or something. Yeah, we talked about this before. They, yeah, they, they, yeah. It's, uh, they will be sold unlocked in those stores. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Unlocked is good, and they're quad bands, so they'll work anywhere. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we did today, isn't it? Yeah. We did, uh, Matt, uh, do we want to take some questions from the chat? Is this a good time to do that? Uh, uh, I guess me. send them to at bagels if you uh, if you have questions for us about uh, stuff that we've seen, uh, things we didn't see that I know people were excited about. Uh, people asked about the Valve booth. I don't think Valve has a booth. I think they're doing closed door meetings. It seems like from why what, are they here? Well, what I've heard from sources that I do not want to rat out is that they are going to unveil the 10-foot interface for Steam, the fabled 10-foot oh, yes. interface for Steam. Which I have a very serious interest I am in so that. excited. As PC gamers in the living room, big I think all of us are now, right? Yeah, I think when you say PC gamers, we're uh, all we're all, forward, big, we're all big living room like, PC gaming Like, like when Steve here. Jobs said, this is, you know, we're redesigning Mac, you know, laptops for the future with MacBook Air, yeah. PC gamers for the future, is the living room also. Yes, is yeah. the living room yeah. HTPC Steam experience. Let it take, let it, let it take that oh. experience. Uh, uh, Wes, we need to, you, your mic has turned down, but uh, if, if Matt will turn up uh, Number five? five, whichever one, yeah, five I think it is. Mm. Uh, that needs to be turned up a little bit less than the other ones. This mm. is a lot of sausage making for the podcast. Can you guys hear me? Is he, as, long sure. as, as long as the I lights aren't red when he talks. Say, uh, I say Valve is over in the Venetian uh, oh. with some other video game stuff over there that I'd like to go see. Uh, you might still be right that they don't have a booth with stuff that show okay. up. Okay. Uh, but there is some gaming stuff. I would I would make there, the trek so. to the Venetian Could be to a see clandestine this live. Kind of that, that is mission. a video I want to go get. I bet oh, if you yes. emailed Gabe Newell right now, he was saying I'm going to email Doug when we finish the podcast. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, the 10 foot interface apparently is coming very soon. I'm very excited about it. Um, so they're not actually going to unveil it this week. They're just shopping it around to the people that are at the show. I have no idea. Okay. Imagine if. Ima- imagine, imagine the world. world. Ima- imagine how different it would be if Panasonic, in their press conference, yeah. said they had an exclusive deal for Valve 10 foot. That would have that would have been, been the right Megaton. Oh that that my god! My head I'm, I'm going to go and coming. tell you something though. Valve is not stupid enough to do oh, an exclusive agreement with one team. Absolutely vendor. correct. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so yeah, that 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 is definitely coming soon. Haven't seen it. Hopefully, Wes can get over there tomorrow. Maybe check. Yes, that out. Yes, that should be a priority. Valve things. Um, and then we'll, if if that's the case, we'll see if we can get some video All before we have Valve to leave. Um, it might be that we wait to leave on Friday until we can get that, get that coverage. More questions. More questions. Yeah. We bring it. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, go through a few of these rapid fire. Norm, did you get a chance to look through the uh, the EVF, the optical display on the NEX seven? I did, and it's the first OLED EVF. Uh, Explain was, what an EVF is. EVF is electronic viewfinder. It's built in, so uh, so the, this is the, it, it goes into that special connector. No, it's it's uh, into the camera. Oh, it's on, built in. Yes, on the okay. NEX seven, there is no touch screen. It's the same three inch OLED nine twenty K dot uh, screen on the with a swivel on the front. But if you put your face up to the uh, the camera, the yeah. screen turns off its proximity sensor, and the OLED EVF viewfinder turns on, which is good for taking pictures outdoors. You don't get the reflection, and it's right. also much sharper. Easier um, to focus. And I think stuff? it's like 1,500k dots. Like okay, million, that's a lot of dots. Million, uh, dots. Uh, dots are stupid. Dots mean subpixels. Um, so divided that. by three or four is it sharp? Uh, yeah, you got to divide by three plus, and also do green. A, there's more greens, a, a, a right? Aspect ratio yeah. thing. Um, so it's OLED. It looked really, really good. 
Um, uh, that, that's Sony, right? That's Sony. And none of the Sonys yes. have touchscreens, so it's not like uh, you're yes, losing. Yes, the 5N has touchscreen. Oh, but yeah, the only one... that's the only one that has touchscreen. Okay. It's a weird. Uh, it's a weird. That's thing. weird. Okay. Yeah. And that last question was from John underscore F underscore two. Okay. Uh, next one is from uh, Figer, and he asks, or she asks, uh, any opinions on the new Chromebooks or Chromebox? We have not seen any of that no, stuff yet. I haven't heard much about Chromebooks since no. they first came out. Uh, I think that I think that uh, Chromebooks have a real market. I think it is probably uh, amongst the youth of America. Uh, I think what? that I don't even know what that means. I think it's for kids. Really? Yeah. I think it's for edu- education. Education is what I'm thinking. Okay, which yeah. is less of an age thing. And maybe I think, a class I thing. think that once well, you reach a certain the point majority of, of people who are in education yes. are young people. Okay. Yeah, you need a, you need a yes. real computer. But I don't think it's for college, college students at all. High school or college, you get a real computer. Yes. Junior high school and elementary yeah. school, you get a Chromebook or a tablet. Okay. Matt Bragger. A couple of people have asked, uh, "What did Gary do today?" Well, we'll, we'll, talk we'll, about we'll get to that. Okay. Fake okay. Outtakes. We'll get to that. So okay, so we'll get to that. Um, let's go with uh, from Woods. Um, most positive surprise of the day. The 4K, 4, 4, 4, the upscaling on the 4K. I'm going to say Blow 4K away. had... Yeah, I'm excited about that. Not only the biggest surprise, but the biggest reality distortion effect. I it's, mean, a week from now, it, I don't know if we'll remember it. It definitely did not look as good as jumping from SD to HD. Right. Uh, yeah, I would have been much more excited about it if it was a $10,000 projector instead of a $25,000 projector. Because a $10,000 projector... Either way. I'm not going to buy it, but a $10,000 projector is like... Five six years closer to being something I can buy, right? right exactly. Than right, a, than right, a twenty five thousand. Right. Still a ways projector. off. Far away. I have to. I have to have a new house to use a projector anyway. Because exactly. my house there doesn't work that way. There are a lot of peripheral costs when you're thinking about getting a projector. I. Okay. Uh, I I would like to see if we can get Sony to send us one of those oh, and do oh, the backyard okay. movie theater with it. Oh, okay. We That's can. Good I idea. want to make a movie theater back. My backyard They're movie theater video. They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't trust us with that. Well, they can come to the movie. They can come. Oh, yeah, they can oh, have yeah. a. They can have a you guy know, like the, supervise. You know, knowing Sony would have the Columbia. Yeah. Sony, well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll. We can. We can if show. You can advertise Men in Black Three. Yeah, Men in Black Three. There you go. Premier, with Will Smith. With Will they Smith. Can have, in they can have a contest, and yeah. some some lucky lucky listeners right. could win the chance to see right. Men in Black Three with Will Smith. Oh my God! Oh so God. much. They're gonna be so disappointed. Right. It's like <laughs> who was that? Up. Wasn't there like a baseball player who sent his twin brother? To autograph, yeah, Jose signings, Canseco, right? Yeah, exactly. Really, it's like that. Yes, yeah, oh, that's twin terrible. Brother. Jose Canseco has a twin brother, and they're identical. Yes. And he got busted <laughs> um, for sending his twin brother to sign autographs for him because somebody, uh, a smart baseball fan, realized that, that he didn't have the same tattoos. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. It's gonna be just like that, except awesome, except for completely different. Exactly. Except for we don't look at all alike. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Matt Bragg, any more questions? What a, um, what a great grift, though. <laughs> That's just yeah. a smart idea. Uh, a while ago, actually, um, Kay Zenny, uh, or Kay Zini, wanted to know if it was uh, if Sony was smart to separate Google TV uh, from the TVs themselves because everyone else is integrating all the smart stuff right into the panels. Uh, you know, Google TV, so far, we have seen very, very little of. We haven't talked to any of the vendors that are doing Google TV yeah, stuff. Lenovo has their TV. Sony mm-hmm. did have it on the, at their booth. Exactly. Uh, Without actually having like significant time, it's the type of thing. I mean, and phones too, uh, because the experience is so tied to how you use, yeah, you consume TV content and how you. I mean, just standing in front of there for five minutes or even fifteen minutes, going through the menus is not going to give you a sense of how uh, whether it's good or not. I'm going to go ahead and tell you something. It's impossible to review air quotes yeah. things from the show floor because it's a very controlled situation. You have about five minutes at the outside with a product at best. Mm -hmm. Um, And and this is why we do hands-ons where we kind of look at it, we we spend as much time with it as we can, and then we make a kind of snap judgment about whether we think it's good or bad, um, whether it's interesting. I mean, interesting is the best something's gonna get on a show floor at uh, someplace as crazy as CES. Something like a TV interface it's really easy to make something that looks awesome for five or six minutes. It's really hard to make something that's awesome for three weeks or three months or three years. Useful. Yeah, and, and it actually adds something to the experience. Um, gimmicks prevail at CES. That's the, that's the bad news. Uh, Matt Bragg? Uh, I had one more here. Let me see if I can pull out. Oh, um, Falco Eagle wants to know. Okay. Uh, have you guys F-Zero seen any? Fan. Pardon? F-Zero fan. Yeah, apparently. Uh, have you guys seen any promising-looking Android tablets? Uh, no. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no, they're already honeycomb. Don't buy honeycomb tablets. Well, okay. No, we, we touched on it earlier. Ice it's not until we see ICS tablets that it's going to get interesting. Ice Cream Sandwich was released for Transformer Prime. 
Yeah. Yesterday. Okay. Uh, That's good. And that I talked to Asus, and they're going to send a Sprint Transformers with ice cream sandwich. Oh, it. fantastic! I, so I stand by my earlier prediction that and the Android tablet market will not seen will not really get exciting until Google steps up and does a Nexus tablet. That's my prediction. I, I just I just think that um, I think that uh, anybody who bought a first gen Android tablet is probably a little pissed off about it still. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that are really stoked about them, and there's a lot of developers that are building apps for them and all that stuff, and they're getting better. It's 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 a little bit. I, I think it's a non-market at this point. Hey, if you go to like a Costco where they do sell the Galaxy tabs. Uh, People are buying them because, like, the arrangement of the boxes on the on the Costco. You floor, can see the gaps. You can see the gaps. Okay. Yeah. So people are actually picking up and spending five, six hundred dollars on at Costco buying these. You can return these, stuff. Yeah. yeah you know the thing about Costco? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I yes. clad return policy. Yeah, that's true. That's also true. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I mean, even at CES, where you would expect to see most like diverse selection of tablets in like the press room or on yeah. the floor, we don't see too many Android tablets. You know, who also who also has an amazing return policy, Bed Bath and Beyond. Really? I'm one of my coffee makers. I had a coffee maker for about like 18 months yeah. and it broke. Okay. And I didn't have the receipt. It was a Keurig, right? It was a Keurig and I, it served me well for about 18 months and then it broke. And uh, I bought it from Bed Bath. I didn't have the box receipt or nothing. I took it in. I said, I got this here about 18 months ago. I got no receipt, nothing. They went, okay, take one off the shelf. And yeah. I walked out with a brand new one. You know one. what it tells you? It tells you the, uh, how much of a ripoff. I mean, those That tells you their are. margin is real yeah. good. Yeah. That and the fact that any time you do anything, they give you 20% off of everything you buy. Yeah, I mean, I've got, so I've got stacks of those 20% off coupons yeah. at home. It's just, it just reminds you to go to the store. Still, a good, a good return policy is, 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 goes is, a, is a good return policy. Yeah. We talked about this already. More questions, Matt? Uh, yeah, kind of a follow-up question from Aaron Chance. Uh, why are none of the Android tablets at CES running ice cream sandwich? Because it's uh, not... Because they need it, to be approved by carrier if they're partnered with the carrier. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, the proprietary UI, so yeah. like TouchWiz, you know, the Motorola stuff, that all needs to be revamped. And yeah, it's, yeah, we didn't talk about that Sony, process. that Sony phone. Uh, we saw oh, the yeah, Sony yeah. Uh, Xperia Ion. Ion, right? Yes, it is Xperia Ion, uh, and it's probably going to be the first phone uh, marketed as a Sony phone, as a Sony Xperia phone, rather than a Sony Ericsson phone. Uh, Ericsson and Sony Ericsson is being wholly consumed by Sony. Uh, the the industrial design on the phone is gorgeous. Yeah. Really, really amazing. They're calling it a monolith slab design. It, basically, when turned off, it looks like it looks like an iPhone without the uh, aluminum band around the It just looks like edge. a black, block, just, a black don't slab. Don't say it looks like the iPhone. Hot black Desiato's it looks, phone. Yes. It, 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 it's, or, very, it's a very unique uh, design. Final Tap's black album. Yes. How much more black could this be? And the answer is no, none. None, none more it's black. It's all of the black. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it looks really good. They're running a proprietary UI that does some some kind of janky, weird. I, I mean, it, I say janky and weird. I, I think it's unnecessary flash. Uh, like, uh, given the choice between having a stock experience and some some mm -hmm. sizzle, I'm gonna take the stock experience. Yeah. Um, However, and, performance was good. Yes, performance was good. The nice camera. Really nice camera. Yeah. 12 megapixels on the back, using some some and, nice a, and a low light a low light yes. friendly sensor, which is important on a smartphone yes. because the flash flash on smartphones. We all have them. They make awesome flashlights when you need a little bit of light. I don't I, ever turn on the flash. I have never, ever used the flash on my phone well, camera. Every time I've done it, it's made a bad picture, so I just yeah, It's terrible. It, it just looks yeah. awful. It looks washed out and go, kind of ghostly and just bad. The only time you use the flash is if you're in a dark, dark room where the choice is no picture or some picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's the experience. It's a PlayStation certified phone. Yes, it's so a, it will it, play your, you know, your ba Crash Bandicoots yeah, and stuff for PlayStation Suite, Dual, yeah. Dual Core, never really um, launched. Dual Core, it, but it was a, it was a, like it's, it's really nice because we're seeing those guys are doing really good industrial design on the phones. It's not a cheap looking plasticky phone. It doesn't feel flimsy or anything like that. I, I was impressed. Yeah. Um, and there's a, a another version of that that's also coming out. I can't remember what it was called, uh, but it it, uh, uh, it changed something to make it less expensive. I can't remember what it was. Doesn't seem I important. Didn't see that one. Yeah, it was right next to it. Oh. Uh, we talked about it for like two seconds. Um, any other questions, Matt? Let me take a look. I think people just want to hear what Gary did all day. Well, let's uh, let's close out the show. Uh, this has been a, this has been uh, day one. You want to talk about what you've been testing? What have I been testing? The Fitbit again? Oh well, what, uh, we can t okay. What I've been testing? You wore the Fitbit all day. I wore the Fitbit today. Yeah. I haven't looked at it in a while. Do you want to know uh, total number of steps taken? Seven thousand two hundred and forty-eight. Gary, you have an over or under? No, I don't have a guess. Ten thousand eight hundred and thirty-six. That's a lot of steps. Oh, wow. Yes, that means you took uh, five point two two miles. Uh, Three thousand fifty-four calories burned. 
You earned that hot dog. Yeah, I earned it. How, how many calories? 3,054, according to the Fitbit. It's a, it's oh, usually damn. it's usually a little sunshiny on the calorie burn, just just <laughs> as a, from a, if I recall. Still, I mean, even even, even if that's a, a, you know, even if you whittle that down a little bit, it's still a lot yeah. of calories. You burn. Yeah, it's even not it was bad. Double, right? It's exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like three and an oat burgers, right? I, last year at CS, I lost no, 12 it's like, pounds. It's more like so, six. A lot of that was oh, water because okay. I came back badly dehydrated, oh. but. Uh, oh. But yeah, so uh, that'll do it for us today, Matt. If you can uh, get ready to play a little bit of music, uh, thank you to Gary Witta, Norman Chan, Wesley Fenlon on the on the silent writing, occasionally chipping in with uh, some Valve commentary. Matt Braga on chat. Uh, uh, well, Joey and Thomas who are just chugging over there. I think Drew's on the other side. I can't see him from here, but there seems to be a glow coming from the far side of the of the of the this, room. This is like a weird. Like it's, it's a last year was a little crazier. This, is, this year, the tonight's nice and chill. Yeah, it's very chill. Yeah, well, you've got your yeah. shit down. You know, the, 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 the lesson learned is it's worth coming in. Last night, we, we hit the door, mm -hmm. and it was literally, you walked in the door, we were live four minutes yes. later. The lesson we learned, it's worth taking a minute to kind of... Touch your breath. I changed I mean, shoes. We're, we're all exhausted. I, these are my podcast shoes from now on. Really? I don't wear them on the floor because I put those gel inserts in. Oh, okay. but, uh, but But they're really nice. It's nice. You know, a, a trade show pro tip. Change your shoes halfway through the day. Makes yeah. you feel like a new human being. So uh, that'll do it for us tonight. Thank you guys for sticking, sticking around. Stay tuned for fake outtakes. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more. This is only a test. Tons of great video. Let's see, what do we have tomorrow? All the stuff we talked about tonight on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we got video of all that. There's still some stuff from yesterday. I think you had, you had, a, GoPro, you had a GoPro Oh, incident. my God. I didn't talk about the GoPro. Did I talk about the GoPro yesterday? No, we haven't talked about it at all. Uh, I really want a GoPro. Because you have the extreme lifestyle. Explain what a GoPro is. Uh, a GoPro. Okay. Then I'll make my extreme. I, I, I don't know the Should we let the video speak for itself? No, no. Well, let's, well let's I mean, hype people can watch the video. Um, uh, so the Flip's dead, right? Flip is dead. I got rid of that business. Kodak. Well, long Kodak. Long flip. No, the ZIA, ZIA. Uh, they filed Chapter 11. So I don't okay. know. The future for that looks shaky. Sony announced their new bloggy, which is $250. A little bit expensive for a, a cheap expensive, camera. expensive. And the Wi-Fi features on there have been underwhelming yeah. with, our, with our tests. Good image quality though uh, for yeah. 1080p. Uh, these Sony fears GoPro. I mean, I think they said it as much when I, when I met with them. GoPro. I don't know the the backstory about their company, but it totally feels like two extreme like surfer dudes, right? Think Patrick Swayze from uh, Point Break. From Point Break, right? It's thought about Brody. We iPhone's not good enough for me. And uh, the flip's not good enough for me. I need yeah. something. I want to document my extreme exploits. Yeah, extreme. Uh, and they built the camera. And they got into the camera business. So so, so it's, it's, a, it's a flash-based camera. Yeah, so you put flash SD card in there. Okay. It's a small camera. It looks like a box. It looks like a spy device. Almost. Yeah, it's, a, it's, like, it's right? like the size of a... You know, like, it's like in the single-serving cereal containers, but with the top third chopped off. Kind of. Not, not even as big. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the, the good thing is that it's very sturdy. Mm-hmm. And it could shoot 1080p and, oh, wow. or up to 120 FPS if you shoot in like Ooh. WVGA or something. Uh, but what they're really selling are the accessories, the mounts. So you can basically mount it on anything. Like, uh, like uh, Brian Lamb, friend, friend of the site from yeah. the wire cutter now, has one that he sticks on the front of a surfboard. Yes, totally and literally that. you see like these amazing shots of yeah. him. Paddle, 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 jump, wave, Super smash. wide angle, so it looks yeah. really cool. Uh, they sell this accessory really called the Chesty, which we tried on. It's basically like a, a harness. Okay. Um, it's like it's like what which is it Drake do wears. your face? No, no. Uh, you put it on, the, on your you put the harness on, and the GoPro fits in a little case on okay. the chest. Okay. Okay. So you can jump out of an airplane. Okay. Um, and or you know s snowboard down a hill. I, I noticed this year on Amazing Race they're using GoPros really? for rappelling and bungee and all the all the Perfect. extreme yeah, I stuff would, that they do. I would use this camera. It would make my lifestyle more extreme. It would encourage me. Do they have like booms that you can put on a helmet so it comes out and catches your face as you're jumping off? Have, that's what I want. I don't, they probably do. Okay. I might get one of those. Yeah, it's $300. Who's more extreme than the Asian? Well, I'm, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining I think I can make some like really extreme, like awesome videos of me yeah. like going to the fridge and back to the couch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they have waterproof containers so you can take them into the hot tub with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's pretty go. good stuff. I right? like that part. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, hook it to Huey, see what he does for the day. Put on that the would pet. be fun, yeah. 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 Pet cam. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Wide angle pet cam. I can like really do a Chloe, you know, day out video. Yeah. I think I think we could make the uh, the the pole mm -hmm. the 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 pole that you put behind you yeah. to give you the third person view of you. But you don't get live view. Oh no! Well, you do get live view with an app. So they, they, okay. they their new product, which they talk about, is a Wi-Fi backpack thing oh, where cool. they attach the GoPro and you have like a, a wrist uh, accessory that you can press the button to record. 
oh. or you can use an Android oh, nice. iPhone app so you can get live video. Because if it's like on top of your helmet or something, then you, you don't have to fiddle around with the button. You just button. boom, mash the, the button. Thing. Mash, mash the, the Wi-Fi Does it give you feedback thing. to let you know it's recording? I think it does. There's a light. You can okay. activate up to 50 GoPros at once. Oh my God. If you wanted to. So you could do a Matrix GoPro thing where you, where you yep. bullet time it. If your you exploits. I, I love their tagline. Uh, their, their company tagline is be a hero. Okay. Dude, I, I, I have to say, we get a lot of PR spam. Yeah. When I see a GoPro thing, I always look to see if there's a video in there because it's usually something really awesome and stupid mm-hmm. and dangerous. It kind of makes like, you realize, you know... We're wasting our lives. You know, yeah, we're, yeah, we're pretty pathetic. You're only just yeah. now realizing that? <laughs> no, I was pretty sure of it before. Um, so yeah, you, you had some exploits with the GoPro. Yeah. That'll be up tomorrow, yes. hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, of course, all things are pending. I'm not supposed to ever say... Uh, so don't make promises. Up, no promises. Yeah, don't but we'll, there'll be a lot of awesome stuff on the site tomorrow. What is that? Is that a what is that thing? I can make. Oh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there <laughs> what will. What Norm, is Norm that's has a great one. <laughs> that is a fantastic what, what, what tease. What is that thing over there? What is that amazing, insane thing that I can see on that video <laughs> that, that the viewers cannot see? But will be. But will be talked about tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned. So nice to launch. What the? About that later. <laughs> Stay tuned <laughs> for fake out takes more. This is only a test tomorrow. Uh, until then, I'm Will. I'm, I'm Norm. Uh, Gary's here. Thanks. Uh, uh, video production crew kicked ass today. Uh, we're gonna do some fake that out takes. That is seriously three, so, freaking uh, me out. So, so yeah, uh, Matt, play the music. Hi there. I didn't see you. Test it. Look, that pig has wheels. Oh no, 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 no. Like oh, it's even worse. <laughs> okay. Ah! Gary, what? <laughs> <laughs> we're oh all my harmless. God, we're, we're. Make it stop. Make it go away. <laughs> oh my God, it just. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Don't okay. talk about it. Look uh, away, so what Gary. Did you say? Yeah, what was your. Uh, yeah. What? Tell us, tell us um, about, I had, we spent I had, two hours telling you about what we did. I had a nice day. It won't take me that long. I had a nice day. Nothing. You know, You're wearing a nice suit today. Suit. No, thank you. Yeah. It's not a suit. It's just a, just it's a just jacket. Just a jacket, I guess. Just a jacket. Um, well, Norman, I had a nice breakfast, mm-hmm. and we kind of created. I think we actually created. I thought it was like a nice metaphor for the for the trip. So uh, Norm, at one point, um, reminded us to to somebody said, "Did you bring the hammer?" Because I guess right. he actually I had a, reminder, a hammer yeah. that he yeah. was going to take to the show floor with him in case he needed it's to test things. a Siri reminder. It just popped up and said... Their, yeah. It's a, so yeah, it was a Siri reminder. It says, iCal, whatever, calendar yep. reminder that said, don't, bring forget, the don't forget to bring the hammer. And so Norm was had to actually get a hammer yes. that he was taking to the we show floor. We have a hammer. Yeah. But I, I thought it was just like a psych up. No. Like, it was just a, like, a, like a metaphorical thing. Like, don't forget, we've got to bring the hammer. We're going to bring you it know. down. <laughs> like, it was just some kind of like way that he psychs himself up. It's kind of like... Oh, it's gears. It's a very gears thing. Like kind of Jack yeah. Donaghy, like it, psyching himself it, up. In, in the, the mirror. first hundred episodes, our motto was always be testing. I think bring the hammer is. But now I like it. I like it. It's like right. you gotta, when, we, when we go to the blackjack tables <coughs> after this, we're going to bring the hammer. I'm changing. I'm changing the tagline. And, on the and site if we don't tonight. pay our debts, they'll bring the hammer. That's too. right. They our certainly will. Um, or if they think you're counting, that's they'll use our ball peen hammer against us. Mm. Um, so what did I do? So we had a nice. So can we talk about the breakfast we did? Yes, we did. You guys uh, got Friday the same Benedict. Thing. I mean, yes. that's really all that yeah. needs to be said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the other I thing, I mean, I can't, I can't have it. But the guy next to me on the other table was eating this French toast, which looked amazing. There, Basically, it was an entire French baguette, which oh, they yeah. had split down the middle and then French toasted. Is, is this a new menu? I don't remember any of the stuff on the no, planet. It's the same we menu. ate it. We, I've eaten a lot at Planet Dailies over yeah, the years. Yeah, like past four years, yeah. Four, yeah. five years. And five years. Uh, our server, who was this very nice lady, was telling us about how she uh, is, tra- is is about to uh, become a manager at the at the oh, restaurant. Oh, nice. And I said, that's great. And I said, do you want, I gave her some management tips. Okay. Yeah. I said, on your first Shoot day. Shoot that guy? What? <laughs> Shoot that guy? No, no, no. It was, um, as you know, I used to run a, a major uh, national uh, publication. I had yes. to manage a large team of it's people. True. I, yeah, I've got true. some tips. We, we've both done that. Yeah, we've both done it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, absolutely. Um, my, so my tip was, on your first day as a manager, mm-hmm. fire someone completely at random and without cause to, to instill utter terror so in good all the remaining employees. Yes. And you, I mean, Alpha. It's, it's like prison. Yeah. Fuck someone up the first day or become someone's bitch. Right. You, so that's the management, are, management is much like that. Uh, well, you learn this in prison, right? What's that? Well, you learn this. These are lessons you learned in prison. Yeah, in I, don't like, I don't like to talk about that time in my life. But um, it was, so the breakfast was good. Norm then had to run off very quickly to go join you guys at the right. van. Working. The, the party van and, and go to CES. 
And then what did I do? I went back up to my room and, uh, oh, I had a nice jacuzzi. I finally got to get a, a okay. soak in the hot tub. Did that you take was... a nap? Wait, no. I didn't take a nap. I wasn't sleepy. Okay. Um, I... It's okay. <laughs> I did not take a nap. I was not <laughs> sleepy. This is like the anti-CES. Like, after all your craziness, shooting right. videos. We've been working for 18 every hours. hours. Like, oh, yes. And then I had, then I had a biscuit. <laughs> and sat around for a bit, <laughs> and I watched some. M- I watched some MSNBC. Well, today was a New Hampshire primary, so I was watching yeah, some of that coverage Romney, on TV. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's Romney and uh, Ron Paul doing very well. And um, so I did that for a bit, and then uh, went downstairs and uh, decided to have my. I haven't had a, a real, you know, make your scene blackjack session yet. Slow you, motion. And so I ca- so I went downstairs into um, went downstairs to the Planet Hollywood Casino. And it's nice to, you know, during the day when it's less busy, it's easy to find a yeah. table, you know, but, you know, it's about your speed. And uh, I played for a few hours and, and did quite well, won some money, play, pleased with that. It's good. And yeah, got off to a good start. And um, then what did I do? Uh, came back upstairs, changed, went out for dinner. Uh, a friend of mine is in town. Hold on, on. We just covered eight hours with like three sentences. Yeah, I told you I played blackjack. <laughs> Yeah, how I works, played right? blackjack. Three words, eight hours. Yeah. How'd you um, do? Up, down? I'm even? up. Okay, that's good. It's good. I'm, it's up, good place I'm, to a, I'm up a decent you amount. You never should ask. Oh, should really? Is that rude? Yeah, it's rude. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, you can ask up or down. You don't just. You shouldn't really ask. Yeah, I didn't say. Hey, did you make? Yeah, yeah, yeah you up should or let, down. Let the person right. tell you. Okay. Well, I'll. I'll no, I'm. I'm definitely up. I was at a point where the money that my original stake, I was able to set that aside and just play with the money that oh, I had won. Oh, that's good. So even if I blew all of that, I'm basically yeah. back where I still just broke yeah, even. That's good. Uh, good really, I had a really interesting conversation with the pit boss. He was telling me about how a lot of the casinos along the strip here are hemorrhaging money. <coughs> uh, the area, the city center here, which is the yeah. massive, you know, shopping center, restaurant, you know, hotel complex they built. Uh, which cost eight point five billion dollars. Yeah. Is that the one that George Clooney invested in? Uh, I don't know. It's apparently it's, it was all mo- the major investor was Deutsche Bank. Oh. Ocean's money. Um, eight point five billion dollars. It is now worth four billion dollars, and they, he was saying that they're apparently seriously considering demolishing one of the buildings just simply as a tax write off because it's hemorrhaging so much money. Oh boy. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I used to say it's like. I've been coming wow. to Vegas for many, many years, and you know, there's always construction. There's always something being built. There's always it's always growing. There's always something new happening. So just look around. No cranes. No construction. It yeah. stopped. There's there's not going to be any new construction in the there, city there's on the, on for the, the next ten years. On the other side of town, there's some rusted out hulks that they were like two thirds of the way done, and yes. just didn't bother putting glass on the sides even. Yeah, like so that, like, like that hotel yeah. in uh, in North Korea. You should, Remember that pyramid that they never finished? Pretty much exactly like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Vegas Here's has later. definitely you know, slowed down. A lot of a lot of these casinos are not are not doing well right now. So there's well, the construction and the growth has definitely. You're, slowed you're right not now. helping. I'm not helping because I'm taking all their money. Yeah. Um, big big hit big hits. Yeah. So I had inter- had a very interesting conversation with him. Oh, and I got oh I've got a little, I've got something for you guys. Oh no, I don't. It's in my other pants. Oh, oh no, I'll have to give it to you after the show. What a bummer. Oh. I can tell you what it is though. Okay. Um, Paint a word picture. He gave me, so I got a player's card so I can get tracked. Mm-hmm. Okay. I said, you know, what have I got to do to get some comps around here? Uh-huh. And he said, you know, you'd like to play at a certain level, blah, blah, blah. So I've been doing that. And, uh, and he was explaining to me, he's like, you know, these days, we've, we, again, as part of the austerity measures that is affecting even Vegas, yeah. uh, he was saying, you know, we don't, it's really, you've got to really roll big time and for, and for serious amounts of time in order to get comped anything anymore. You mean drinks or you mean like hotel rooms? Well, anything between you know between drinks and like you know like the minimum thing they can really comp you is like here's a coupon like take it to the Planet Daily and you yeah know, you get a buffet free, get a get a breakfast yeah. or whatever the serious high rollers like Pacta get their whole room comped okay because he is rolling fucking so so just to be clear you roll Norm rolls Norm rolls X you're rolling X somewhere between X and X squared. Is Pacta rolling X squared squared? I don't think there is a letter in the alphabet for how he's rolling. <laughs> Double Z. Um, he's rolling Omega. Okay. <laughs> so Norm's Alpha. He, he is the Omega. He is the Omega Man in oh Vegas. Boy. Okay. Um, so he was. So I was talking to the pit boss. He was a really nice guy. Uh, very interesting. It's always good to get friendly with the pit bosses. Yeah. A because they've got interesting stories to tell, and B because if there's ever a dispute over the cards that have been dealt or anything yeah. like the dealer screws up, the pit boss will give you a break. Um, and, and if you get go to the back, the casino police room, then maybe. He'll break the hand that you don't use to, to write or something. Yeah, but that doesn't really happen unless you're seriously counting cards or being a complete okay, dick. So, okay. um, so anyway, he was saying, yeah, you don't really get comped anymore. Like you've really got to be playing serious for serious money to get comped or anything these days. Uh, and I said, oh, that kind of sucks. He says, yeah, like you like, said, like here, have these. Like this is this is the kind of shit that we do now. And he gave me two uh, coupons for a free slice of pizza 
at the Miracle Mile shops that and we you have were here. playing at a twenty-five dollar table. Yeah, no, it was only it's in the afternoon. So it was only fifty. I was playing oh, okay. twenty-five. I was playing twenty-five, but it was okay. fifteen dollar minimum table. Oh, okay. I was playing 25 or 50, depending on how my luck was rolling. Okay. Um, and uh, so he gave me these two coupons, and he said, he says, like, for, good for a free slice of pizza. But then you read the small print, it says, when you buy a slice. So it's actually a bogey. What? It's not even a free slice. It's you, you buy get... a slice, wow. and you get another slice oh for free. God. And it's pizza, like the, the highest what? markup item there is. Wow. The cheapest shit. But anyway, if you want some free pizza, I got some. Oh, uh, that's you, a you, shit gift. I'm not gonna, I, well, I don't eat pizza, but I, uh. Uh, yeah, I tell him that I want the free. I, I can give it so, to someone else. So I've got some pizza coupons. Oh, I'm okay, thanks. Though. Pizza, yeah. I think I'm okay too. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, so I played blackjack for, for a while, and like I said, I did quite well, cashed out, um, and I uh, went up to my room, changed, kind of watched the, the primary New Hampshire results were coming in, um, and then went back downstairs, went across the street to the Aria, which okay. I'd never been to, which is a beautiful, be- so I get, really, that, that's the place that's losing all the money. What, when you go into that, did you go in the main entrance upstairs? Or did you no, go what I did street? was I went across the walkway here, and okay. then went through that crazy mall. Oh, yeah. Which is like a ridiculous mall. It's like a ma- imagine like the, the massive mall that where, wherever it is that you live in your town hall is a big mall. Yeah. But imagine that every single shop is a ridiculous high end luxury shop. Gucci, like Gucci. Prada, yeah. Gucci, Louis oh, Vuitton, yeah. you know, Hermes, you name it. It's just ridiculous. Don't and it's empty song. all the time because no one's buying that shit. Right. Anyway, the, the, but there are some beautiful, beautiful restaurants there. So a friend of mine, a fellow screenwriter, a guy named John August, who wrote, you know, some cool movies. Uh, is in town to talk actually at CES tomorrow. Oh, cool. He writes about, the blog. Uh, what's that? He writes the blog, right? Yeah, he writes a great screenwriting blog, johnaugust.com. Uh, and he's also an app developer. He's, he makes his own apps oh, for, cool. for the Mac and for iOS. And uh, so he's you know kind of on that verge of like showbiz and technology. So he's here tomorrow talking on a panel about how social media and, techno- and that kind of technology is changing the way that movies are made and marketed. So that's awesome. interesting. Uh, and so he was in town. And I, uh, so I said, hey, you want to meet up? And he said, yeah, let's have dinner. So I went across the street to the Aria. Um, and I just called the concierge and said, what's good here? And they said, oh, you got to go to Julian Serrano. Oh. Uh, Spanish, uh, small plate tapas, tapas type yeah, food. Yeah. Um, made a reservation, which is a good thing because it was packed when we got yeah. there. Sat down. The f- I, I, we had another flawless gastronomic experience. Yeah. Wow. Go there. Um, order the olives. Just, you know, just the small plates. Order yeah. the olives. Yeah. And the, uh, the almonds. Yeah. These almonds the Marco- are not... The Marconi almonds? They're not from Earth. The flat ones, They're right? from the future or some alien planet where all they do, yeah. they've devoted their entire culture <laughs> to the cultivation of almonds. Uh-huh. And they've like reached like the absolute fucking razor pinnacle edge of what if, almond What if those were the creation? almond people's babies? I mean, I don't give a fuck. They were so good. <laughs> I eat them. Um, they were so good. And the, and the olives were also excellent. And oh my God, the ahi tuna tempura. Uh-huh. Ahi tuna tempura is like, Mwah! so good. It's wow. all just one, I would put it actually one notch under Lotus of Siam. That's how good it was. Wow. It was that good. So I mean, we got a chance I'm, to go over there. I'm impressed. This, might be, this might be the new much. call now. The, 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 if we have a chance to eat something between yeah. you know, another nice meal, I can, we'll go to Jamie, uh, uh, Julian Serrano and you've okay. got to try it. It's okay. the, the, uh, just, oh my God, so good. So I had an interesting chat with John, who's talking about his latest project. So John, who wrote the movie Big Fish, yeah. uh, is now currently, oh, he's, he's putting together, and it's very close to being done, it's actually gonna debut next year, a Broadway musical of Big Fish. Oh, Ooh. fantastic, yeah, that's it's, awesome. And it's gonna, it's gonna come out next year on Broadway. They've, they're almost done, they're gonna do a little off-Broadway run. And uh, and then it'll be a broad. Does it have does does it have like big music music writing? Is it? Yeah, it's a like, big musical. Big like musical numbers. People writing like is it is it big musical names writing the songs? Or yeah, well, it... actually, the guy who wrote the music for it, interestingly enough, uh, wrote the Holly Madison Peep Show show, oh, which is here, here at Planet oh, Hollywood. Okay. Uh, which apparently is not very good. John's, you know, he had to go see it because it's the same yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of a shitty show. Uh, but anyway, well, so awkward, very interesting. Um, you know, Big Fish the musical sounds like a, like, a, like a, a cool thing Big to Fish. see. He was telling me some of this stuff about it. it's really you interesting. Know, the whole weird. the whole story of like putting together a a, a Broadway musical is very interesting. All yeah, yeah. Comes the other workshops and all the stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so, they've, so, yeah, so they've been that. they've been workshopping yeah. it and uh, you know putting together all the the music and the choreography and the production design. Interesting. Um, and you gotta uh, find a space to do it. Can yeah, so that's the thing. So they have to find like a Broadway. So they go. So little towns, they were well, not little towns, big cities, but they go to like Chicago and they yeah. take it around and you know put it in front of a live audience for the first time, make any final tweaks, and then they Beta have a test. Then yeah. they have a whole Broadway run. Yeah. Interesting. So that'll be, I think that'll be a cool so show. that was your dinner, and then you came. So here. I had so I had a great dinner with John. Like I said, the Julian Serrano is a fantastic restaurant. That's, that's up there now. I, so my big so my big recommendations for Vegas food if you come here, Lotus of Siam, yeah, which is unbelievable and and really cheap too. Yes, the Wicked Spoon buffet at the Cosmopolitan yep. 
and now Julian Serrano at the Aria, which right. is just unbelievable. The best. I'm actually not even a Spanish small plate tapas kind of guy, but this this place blew me away. Unreal. Um, the other the other thing I was gonna say, the other uh, they did a really good job with restaurants at the Cosmo and the Aria. Uh, Sage, which was some place that Gene and I were going to go and we actually bailed on because yeah. we had eaten too much good food by the time it was time to go to Sage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Sean Mc, Mc, McCain's, I yeah. think. Well, we, I, I discovered this place completely by McClain. accident last John year. McClain. Oh, okay. Last year I went to John a place McClain. called um, Blue Ribbon at okay. the Cosmopolitan, which yeah. is apparently a, a famous New York place. It's a sushi Japanese place. And I ate there last year and it's fantastic. And so when John said he was wanting to go get dinner, I said, oh, I, I'd try and get us in there because I know it's good. It was booked up. So I was like, okay, maybe we'll try the Aria. I know they have good restaurants there. And I called the concierge and said, just what, what, yeah. what's good? And it's said, expensive though. And, and no, not really. No, it wasn't bad. Well, no, I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's an expensive meal, but it's not, it's not a super expensive It was meal. about, it was about uh, $70 a head. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, which for a meal of that quality. Well, for, yeah, if you have the, is, yeah, yeah. the best meals We didn't have wine or anything. Or, you know, just, you it, can it do was, bad damage. Yeah, but you wine, know, yeah. We had two appetizers, three appetizers. You know, again, you just pick at it family style. Uh, the olives. Fantastic. The, the almonds and the tempura ahi tuna. Love a good And then almond. John had like a kind of a really interesting, actually looked kind of low rent, but it was amazing. He had like a white fish. You know how like you can, you can cook uh, fish in like paper, like oh, paper yeah. parcels? Yeah. Well, they cook it in this plastic bag that's made in like oven proof plastic. Interesting. And they bring it to you in the plastic bag and it's all like done up in a nice ribbon and you undo it and the steam comes out and you eat the fish out of the plastic bag, which is on the plate. Interesting. And it looked wonderful. And I had a, um, a pork chop with these little crispy wonton strings on top. And oh, it was oh, so good. You got to go there. We had stuff off the steam um, table. So then, and then so I walked back over here with Johnny, went, to, went over to the Paris and I came back here and we did a live show. And that's, that's really my day. It's been pretty low oh, key. Right. Really nice, very relaxing day. It's what I needed. I, for now, I mean, you know, today, for me, it's Vegas, right? It's what, uh, half 11? The day is just beginning. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Bring the hammer. Let's go to those tables. Bring that's the right. hammer. And on that note, we'll... Oh, one other thing. I may have something very interesting for you tomorrow, but I cannot reveal any details yet. Can you reveal details after we're off the show? Yeah, I'll tell you after the show. We'll be back tomorrow with more testing. Until then, I'm Will. I'm Norm. I'm Gary. Bye. Stall. 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 Drew's making this. Stall for what? Just pull the plug out of the thing. The the, the stream's Uh, still live. Kick it over. Um, uh, 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 u